Okay, hey everyone, my name is Arthur and I have prepared agenda for you. Thank you for joining. I'm glad to see you here. So um, I know you all are interested in maybe changing the career. Some of you um, already graduated from some courses and you would like to find a job because uh, for some of you um, job search was unsuccessful. So what I'm going to do, um, I will show you the reasons. So how many people uh, wanted to come to this meeting and how many people um, <clears throat> and what brought them here? Because you were applying for this webinar and you were selecting the reason why you're here. And many people had interesting reasons. So we will go over that. Then I will go over my story. Uh, probably that will motivate you a little bit to listen uh, about me, about my story, how I get to IT. Uh, then I will, we will talk about some failure stories, some success stories of other people. Uh, then, and then we will go over questions you have, uh, some basic questions I prepared for you, like um, how to get in IT right now, how about the job market right now, and so many, uh, and many others. And if we have more time, we can even go over for newbies. We can over go over, for example, what tester does. I can show you something, um, what tester does in the system. And I can show you some test automation if you're interested at the end. So yeah, so let's get started. So let me open my document. So I currently see only 18 people joined, but 99 people, 99 people registered in the, in that spreadsheet. So 15 of them, 15, uh, said that I always wanted to be QA or software developer. Then 12 of you said that graduated from a course and cannot find a job. That's fine. Today will be a lot of motivation. So I, I hope that will help you. 30 people said that just interested in IT and technologies. One person just hanging out. Eight people just want to make more money. Never tell that during the interview, but okay, understood. Uh, some people, 22 people said that looking for new opportunities in the USA. And six people select other. Okay. Interesting statistics. So let's get started. So main reason. So again, we will be talking about why people do not get a job and why people want, why some people are successful and some people are not. Um, I can tell you right away. So we'll be talking a, a lot about many reasons, many, uh, many other things are important for the interview for, to be successful. But the main one, the main reason why you are getting a job or not is your motivation. Something that brought you here, something that brought you to this webinar or something that maybe, uh, maybe made you uh, graduate from some course, maybe you already, some of you already graduated from some courses and like, actively looking for a job. Is there a person like that right now? Yeah. Yeah, so, and why do you think, what, what's going on? Why you cannot find a job? So what is your opinion? You're asking me, right? Yes. Uh, oh, yeah, <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Um, mm, what actually I never worked in IT, I've been relating to IT before I started courses recently, right? Well, now I'm recently graduated and I feel like it was a lot of, I graduated automation course, right? It okay. was both manual theory, automation, um, programming language uh, tools and all of that. It was kind of a lot of everything to digest, to assimilate, you know. And now I feel like I have some mess in my head. And, and actually what I'm doing right now is trying to um, bring some order to maybe reconsider, to, uh, to again walk through it. Uh, and uh, that's part of the reason why I have fear talking to recruiters because uh, maybe not even rec recruiters too, actually. Yeah. Cause I don't feel, I don't have that self-confidence. Uh, everybody says that 
you do it 10 times, you do it 20 times, at some point you will be fine. Uh, you will just get used to it. But still so this times? feeling of afraid of failure, that's what. So how many times did you do that? So, so far, maybe five times. Something and like you, this. do you feel like better doing like uh, every new time you go to the interview, you talk to recruiter, do you feel better uh, or maybe more relaxed or still stressed? In some points, yes. But at the same time, they start asking something new and you're standing panic, you know, oh my God, this, oh, I need to this, uh, brush up this, or I need to brush up that. And then you realize you can't just match all the job descriptions because yes. sometimes they're really weird and they actually describe three persons ro roles in one. And uh, uh, I don't okay. know, this kind of sometimes brings my mood, mood down. So it seems like, since I'm hiring people, I can tell you right away. So you don't have to be afraid of anything. That's first thing. And second thing, you just need to be natural. And that's it. You cannot be better than you are. And that probably what makes people mm, fail uh, during the interview. They, they try to be a better than they are. And that's the main problem. So if you have enough motivation, so there is a reason, right? Why you took the courses, uh, why you graduated, why are you looking for a job right now, right? there is yeah, a reason yeah and i like it i still like it also although yes. i'm terrified and this and that i still like it and i don't regret i switched to it but yeah it looks like a little bit it will take me longer than i than i thought it will <laughs> that is fine that is fine the only thing you need to understand i will tell you my story and you will see that there was a lot of um, periods when i was demotivated when i was looking for a job for several months and I was giving up, but there was something that was still moving me forward. And that's what you need to find uh, because there should be a reason why you continue looking for a job. And that's the main reason what probably will make you successful because that you need to understand that need, you need to do that. And that's it. Um, that's one point we will talk more about other stuff but what i can tell you uh we had a lot of conversations recently in many groups and people were telling hey right now many people they get a job because they have relatives or friends or blah 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 no people are getting jobs because they just they just come to the interview and they are natural they just smile you know they are just nice people to talk to they nice people to work and people hire emotionally so we all hire emotionally i'm hiring people for example recently i had opening uh, for manual position and 80 people applied for one position and i probably conducted like 20 interviews out of those 80 i conducted 20 interviews and then many people they were just they were not natural they were just trying to read something right and i said right away when when we just started every uh, interview, I said, hey, just pretend we are just friends and we are sitting in a bar drinking a beer as Edward are doing right now, right? Just pretend that. And I'm just, I don't know anything about IT, IT and i um, asking you, hey, what is testing? What is that? What is that? And just try to explain me. Yeah, nice job, Edward. Uh, and just try to explain me just in simple words without, you know, using some words from the book or from the Google, just how you understand that. And that's the phrase I was telling right away when we just started. And I can tell you that like 90% of people were not listening to me. They were just still trying to read something. They had some probably some preparations, uh, some answers on the screen, and they were just reading from the screen without trying to understand, trying to be natural. And that's visible. If I conduct the interview, I, uh, I see that right away, that pe uh, people are not natural, they are lying. And I don't need that. I just need people to be natural. And when they're asking me, hey, what is your ideal candidate? And I'm telling them, hey, guys, I just need a regular person, natural. That person, uh, and I have a pain. Many of my uh, workers, they are not responsible because I, I was not building this team from the scratch. I just joined the company uh, two years ago. So many people are demotivated are not proactive. Uh, I had to babysit some uh, some of them, right? So 
who I'm looking for is just responsible person, natural responsible person. You may not know something, but that doesn't matter anything for me. What I need from you is just to be natural, be responsible, be proactive. Just not to sit, you know, hide in the corner, just be proactive. If you come to the interview, you smile, you're a nice person, you know, um, and we had a good conversation, that's it. You can say that you're hired. So, and when, uh, and I know that uh, from my experience, and if I'm stressed, uh, I'm afraid going to the interview, talking to recruiters, I won't be successful because I, I will just fail. I won't be natural. And uh, in my career, what happened when I was uh, giving up, especially looking for my first job, when you about to give up, then you relax, say, hey, I don't care about this one more interview. I just go there. I know I, I will fail. And you just relax. You talk to people just as, you're, as to your friends. And there you succeed. You get several offers in a row. And that's how it happens. And that's why probably that what uh, you was telling me that, okay, some people telling me that I need to go to more interviews and uh, I will get used to them. Yes, that may work. But the main probably thing is to understand, to understand that. So you need to be relaxed. That's the goal. Uh, second part is motivation. As actually motivation is the main one, the main reason what will make you successful. Because uh, some people, I've, even we will tell about, we will talk about uh, failure stories. But if you have motivation, for example, there is motivation for me right now to do this, to do different courses. There is motivation. It's really hard. It's difficult. It's stressful. But I'm still doing that. Why? Because I have a goal. I have a mission. I have some vision. And I'm still doing that because I, I'm telling myself, hey, it, there is no other way. And you just need to do, continue doing that. Even if it's hard, it's stressful, just continue doing that. Just relax and try to go over that. And that's it. And that's why I'm doing. Uh, same to you. So let me probably tell you my story. And you guys are welcome to stop me at any point, ask questions, just turn on your microphone or uh, put the message in the chat. I will just answer your questions. So let me start from my story. So actually, the interesting part that I was uh, graduated from medical university back in 2012. Yeah, it was back in Ukraine. Uh, I was a doctor, surgeon. But due to some problems, due to corruption, I, I left medicine. I said no. Uh, there was a, so they, they were trying to uh, make me pay for my uh, position in the hospital as a surgeon. Uh, and I said, no, I won't be part of that. So I, I just quit and I left medicine. And then I was looking for something new for myself. And I, oh, even during the study in the university, I was creating some websites for different uh, divisions in the university, right? So I was like kind of IT person at the time. I was eager to learn something in IT. And um, so I have decided I'm, um, I found some free courses on YouTube. I finished them into back in 2013, and I started looking for a job in December 2013. It was the worst time to start because usually, if you know, uh, during that period, pre-New Year, pre-period, uh, everybody's leaving, and they usually come back in the middle of January. So there is no movement, no interviews, very bad period. And I was looking, I, and I just started during that period. So I was looking, it was not successful. I was demotivated. It, it was getting better, probably in February. It was getting better. I was getting some calls. I was failing. And main reason was why I was failing because uh, I didn't know English at all. So in the school and in the university, I was uh, studying German. So I never knew English. So I had to learn from scratch. So I, I was learning manual testing and English parallelly. But that was not enough. I was failing. Even back in Ukraine, people, that was like mandatory to know English. So people were asking me, hey, uh, let's uh, talk in English. So they were like giving me some uh, uh, tries to talk in English. And I was failing because I didn't know English. Um, like a little bit, I knew some common phrases, but not as good to just 
go through the interview. So, uh, so what I did, I wrote a story about myself. I realized what they're asking, uh, the common questions. So I just covered those common questions in my story in Russian. So I created that uh, about my experience, about who I am, about my projects, of course, test projects. I covered that, translated using Google Translator and just learn that. So even if you wake up me during the night, I will tell you that story. So I just learned that. Okay, and then I started to pass uh, English part of the interview. So that was good. And finally, in I was almost about to give up, but in end of February um, 2014, I got two offers. And just uh, imagine me, a guy after the uh, YouTube courses, and I've got my first offer was uh, QA lead, QA lead position. Uh, it was just to lead the three people from India. So the position was in Ukraine, in the city of Odessa. Uh, I was I supposed to be just only QA there and three plus three people uh, in India and just to like lead them. And they just liked me because by that time, after I failed several times, I just got used to the interviews. I just came to that interview. I was natural. And I learned that story about myself in English. And you know what happened? Uh, CEO of that company, he was from the United States. And the final interview was with him. And I was talking with him in English. Of course, using the, these words, I learned from that story. Uh, told him my story that I learned. And it worked. And they hired me. They told me, hey, here is your uh, job offer. And guess what? I declined that offer because I found another offer in my city just in a few days. And that's what happened. I, that's how I found my first job in four months. So it took for me four months. But again, I failed like 11 times. I had like 11 unsuccessful interviews. It's not only recruiters calls, guys. It's the real interviews, technical interviews with people. I failed like 11 times. But I was not giving up because I was thinking, uh, first of all, there was a motivation for me. So I, I knew that some people already did the same as I did. That's one thing. And another thing that uh, when I was studying, when I uh, was studying a manual testing, I figured out that there is a guy in my city, uh, his name Costa, we, we became friends after that. Uh, so he already graduated from those courses. He already graduated and found a job in my city. So I said, hey, if he did that, I will do that for sure. So that was a big motivation for me because I knew that if he was able to do that, I will do that as well. And that's it. There was no question, will I do that? Will I succeed or not? Because I knew exactly if there is a person who already did that, I will do that as well. Because if I'm not finding a job, that means that there is a problem and I need just to find that problem and fix it. There was a problem in English. I fixed it. Then was a problem and that was, I was a little bit stressed. I was afraid of going to the interviews. I fixed that, I relaxed. And at the end, after four months, I finally got a job. Plus I got uh, several job offers. So this is what, how it usually happens. And after that, when I was changing jobs, it, that was happening to me many times. So you look for a job, you had nothing, and then you got several offers at a time. This, that's what usually happens. So just do not give up, just continue looking for a job and remember what brought you to the courses, what, what makes you move forward and that's how you will succeed. And there is nothing scare in going to the interviews or talking to recruiters. Um, you just need to know that you have to do that and that's it. Okay, what happened next? Um, when I joined my first company, I started to do some courses. So I, I wanted to share my experience with other people. Um, so I started to record my first free course. I just recorded videos on YouTube and put it on the internet and without any feedback, without doing anything, just recorded videos, shared my feedback, uh, recorded probably like 12 or 15 videos. And that's it. That was my first course. And after a year, I realized that 
I realized that I'm not growing in my current company. And I said, okay, I'm going to quit. And uh, I started to look for another job. So I found it pretty quickly. It's easier when you have a job, it's easier, right? Because you even go to the market, you fail, you're still working, you continue working, and then you go to another interview, then you succeed, you get that job, that offer, and then tell your company, hey, I'm leaving. And it's easier. It's easier probably emotionally. You're not stressed because you're still working. You love your job, but there is a better, better one. So you're just looking for that better one. You understand that you're not growing and you're just changing your job. So I changed my job and the second company, there was a great opportunity. So uh, they were doing something very interesting. Instead of bringing people from the market, like hiring people, looking for people on the job market, they were conducting boot camps, free boot camps. So for example, 500 people apply for a free boot camp. They select uh, like 100, then HR team calls them. Out of that 100, they select 30 people. And we then conduct a uh, boot camp, a free boot camp for those 30 people. And since, since I'm ready, was like a famous guy, I posted that boot camp uh, on my YouTube. So many people who were studying my free course, uh, they joined. They joined and they came to that boot camp telling, hey, I, I came here because Arthur called us. And there were like people who were studying using my courses and they came to that boot camp. So what happened then? uh and how it was working so uh, 30 people boot camp at, at the end company hired 10 people so i realized that on the courses there are always like unique people always there are genius people you never know about them because previously they were working on different jobs for example there were people who were working as uh, flight attendants right or some other jobs, anything, right? And they were coming to IT courses and they were like best of the best. So, and then I realized that this is the interesting idea and company was right. They were doing that because they had to, to bring person from the market, for example, right? Uh, they had to pay like thousand dollars in Ukraine in that time. It was a good salary, thousand dollars a month uh, and for these people, they were giving them trainee uh, position and it was like $300. But people were happy because bootcamp was free and they got a job. In six months, they became junior people and a year or so they became um, uh, middle key engineers. And then in a year uh, more or uh, maybe a little bit more uh, senior or key leads and so on, they were happy because they got this ch a chance and they were happy company was happy because they were giving um uh, opportunity to people and at that time i just realized hey there are always people who are genius and they just do not know about that and then i started to continue doing those boot camps and i realized that we are just taking best of the best we have five people 500 people who applies and we just take 10 the best of the best of them and just hire them and they are better believe me those people are better than the people from the market and right now i had a, a also conversation yesterday in one of the groups and people were telling hey nobody hire uh, hires people from uh, courses right away they all need experience no nobody cares about your experience of course if you put like zero experience and yesterday you were working uh i don't know uh on uber and today you're just QA engineer, yes, that will probably, there will be some questions regarding your resume. So yes, most of the people who, who graduate from the courses, they put some three years of experience, five years of experience or something like that. But everybody knows on the market that most of the people, they don't have enough experience and their resumes are not, uh, they're not the, like 100 truth, right? We know that, we, we all know that. But that's not important because what we are looking for, again, we would like to see proactivity. We would like to see people's motivation. We would like to see that they are willing to get this job. They are natural. They are relaxed during the interview and that's it. So that doesn't really matter. And what I can tell you 
that uh, I hired probably the past during the past two years, I've hired probably like six or so people right after the courses. And they are better, way better than people who were there in the company for many years because uh, they are super motivated. And they do something right away on day one and they way better. Of course, if 80 people apply, uh, you anyways, you select the best the best one but there are people after the courses i hire all the time because i like them better uh, and they are super motivated than people uh, with many years of experience because usually what happens when people uh, come to the interview with 15 years of experience you know they are they are not super motivated they are just you know hey i have 15 years years of experience you have to pay me a lot and I won't be doing anything because I'm just super, super experienced guy, right? So they are like, you don't like them right away. You just talk to them. You see that they want just uh, a lot of money and do nothing. And on the other hand, you see many other people just after the courses. I, I see that from the resume. I just take the resume. Uh -huh. This is this school. Uh -huh. This resume, uh -huh. this is from this one. And I clearly see from what school that person is coming and how many years of experience uh, is there? Uh, even if you say, hey, five years of experience, I know all these projects because you know, uh, you're not the only one person applying for my job, right? There are like 20 other students from your course applying. So I clearly see like 20 similar resumes. So I exactly know uh -huh, these guys from this school, this guy from this school, and these guys from this school, but that doesn't matter. I'm not saying, hey, they are lying and I'm just, you know, throwing uh, away your resume. No, I'm just uh, taking those people. I like the resume. Okay, let's get uh, you to the interview. And if you're natural, if I see that you are motivated and if you're willing to do this job, I will hire you. I will, I will buy you emotionally. If I just will like you, you will be hired. Uh, again, uh, if you don't answer any question, of course I won't hire you. But I mean, like if you're a regular person, you just answer my questions. Even if you don't know something, it is okay to say no. Uh, I, unfortunately, I was not working with this feature or with this uh, program, uh, but I will learn it if you have it. And if you naturally say that, that's super nice. That is okay. So the better people I hired, the people that did mistakes during the interview, but they honestly said, hey, I don't know this. I honestly tell you that I know I don't know this. I don't know what that is, but I will learn that as quickly as nobody on the market and nobody from the applicants. So if you tell that, if you naturally tell that me, I will hire you. And that's it. So that is what that what matters. Okay. So then I worked two years in that company where we were doing boot camps and I moved to the United States. And that was a big change because I didn't have a, a work permit for several months and I had to go and work as a handyman after a years uh, in IT, right? I had to work as a handyman. So I came here, uh, I started uh, on siding, then I went to flooring and uh, the biggest motivation for me was when I went, uh, we had a project in IBM and we came there and imagine we're working hard, doing flooring, we're dirty, right? And I see these guys, you know, walking with laptops, drinking coffee, sitting, sitting outdoors, laughing, relaxed, just imagine my feeling. I know how to be there. I know how to be there how to beat those guys because I was in IT, right, already. So I know how to how it works. And now I'm here working on flooring, dirty, tired, you know, stressed. And these guys are just walking with their laptops, relaxed, you know, talking, smiling, playing basketball outside. You know, that was super motivation. I said, I will do my best. I will do my best, but I will get this job. So once I get my work permit, I started to look my, for a new job here in the United States. And again, it was uh, December, middle of December. And guess what? Nothing happens. No jobs, no interviews, December, 
uh, mid December, half of the companies they are already on the break. Uh, no interviews, nothing. Usually, it's coming back just like in the middle of January. So okay, it started to come some calls, but nothing. People were calling me, but no interviews. Then again, recruiters calling me new interviews. And by March, I was really stressed and I was giving up. And I had many years of experience by now. I had like four or three years of experience already by that time when I was looking first job here in the United States. And I was giving up. I was telling myself, hell, I don't know what's happening. I cannot find a job. I, I'm a person with experience and I cannot find a job. But again, I was reminding myself about these guys, about that situation in IBM. When I was working in flooring and they were working with laptops, laughing, drinking coffee, you know, hanging out. And I was reminding myself, hey, this is my motivation. What ha what's happening? I'm still working on my current job as handyman. What's blocking me from just continuing doing that and just uh, continue applying for the jobs, going to the interviews, answering calls? What's blocking me? Nothing. Okay, Arthur, then let's continue doing that. And I continued. And finally, what happened in March, I got three job offers at one time. I just found one uh, in Sacramento, actually in the city of Folsom. I found one job there and I said, yes. And Monday was my first day. Then uh, I actually had the interview at Apple and uh, they also told me yes, but they didn't send me a job offer to sign. So I was waiting and uh, third job, I had a good conversation with a recruiter and he promised me a job uh, also in downtown Sacramento. So I said, okay, so, uh, but I uh, applied for this first one in uh, city of Folsom. So, and on Monday, my first day, 7 a.m. in the morning, 11 a.m., uh, 9 a.m. I should be on work. And 7 a.m. I just called them and say, hey, sorry, but I won't come. I have another offer. And even without having an offer from Apple, I still declined their offer. And I was waiting for an offer from Apple. And guess what? In two days, they sent me job offer. I signed it and I go to Apple. I moved to Bay Area, to Silicon Valley. And then in a few days, I got a third offer from that recruiter who promised me a job in down Sacramento. So this is what is happening. When you're about to give up and you give up, you will never get those offers. If you just will continue, you will get them. And I have many more stories to tell you today about other people who were looking for jobs for um, many months. And there were some specific reasons why they were doing that and why it took so long. And we were talking about that to avoid those problems. But none of them give up. They found that job. They dream job. And some of them are extremely successful because they found the job after the courses. They found senior and lead positions right away. Not junior, not middle, senior and lead positions. That's the level. So, and that's how we need to do. Always remember what moves you forward, was what pushes you. Always remember about your motivation, why you took those courses. Or maybe you didn't take the courses, but you're going to. So what actually, why are you willing to do that? What is your reason? What is your goal? Why are you doing that? You need to always remember this and motivate yourself. And if you're about to give up, no, don't do that. Never give up. Just go and continue doing that. Just what you, what you lose? Nothing, right? You continue working on your current job. Uh, you just continue applying for other jobs and continue going to the interviews and you will get that job. Just you need to understand the, the motivation is the main, is probably the main reason why you, uh, why you will get that job. Your motivation, your reason. And then you need to realize, okay, there are other factors. For example, uh, if I'm stressed during the interview, okay, you're stressed because you, you want to get to this job. You want to get to, to your goal 
and it's not happening, right? It's not happening. Uh, and you're stressed because you, you, you're afraid of failing, right? And you, you go to the interview, you're failing and you're afraid of that. And I, I understand because I feel the same. Uh, right now, maybe I'm more relaxed and if even I get fired tomorrow, I won't be like super stressed. I will go to the market and will look for a job especially right now everybody's working remotely so i'm not limited by my uh, city i can apply for any job across the united states right so i won't be stressed but i uh, understand you because i was stressed many times and even with experience when i moved to the united states i was looking for a job for four months and was super stressed i was thinking hey what's wrong with me i'm person with experience and i cannot find a job what's happening but I just, I just had to continue, just had to remind myself why I'm doing this and um, why I need to continue. Let me quickly go over your uh, uh, comments and chats. Um, okay, Asaya saying that uh, your background is in programming. Uh, you want to work with systems level software, okay. Mm -hmm. Certification to learn and okay. Biggest obstacle is that I don't have degree and I'm self-taught. Uh, is this available at your plan? Yes. Uh, look, in IT right now, nobody cares about your certification or your uh, level of education, especially big tech companies. So there is a movement uh, instead. So you don't have to learn and go to a university or go to the college to be a successful programmer or to be successful just IT guy. Uh, instead, people saying, no, you just have to be smart. You just have to even sometimes they conduct their own boot camps and they teach people. And if you're successful on their courses, they will hire you. So right now, it is simple. Uh, for example, I have a pain. You need to understand every person who, who is looking for, uh, uh, for some candidates, they have pain. Uh, they have reason why they're looking for a new person to join their company. For example, their product is growing and uh, they need to create a new project. And there should be a person who will start uh, their QA from scratch. So you need to know how to do that from scratch. What is uh, working with documentation? What is uh, test case planning? What is bug reporting? So you need to know the SDLC and place of testing team in it. If you know that, and good courses will uh, give you that knowledge. If you know that, they will just bring you to the interview. They will ask you those questions. And all questions they ask are aimed to understand if you're that person. So they will... Uh, asking you, hey, uh, what is SDLC? And there is a reason why they're asking that, because they need you to know that. If you know that and you answer that question, they will say, yes, plus. Then, okay, what is the role of software testing? So uh, tell me about your recent project and what was your role in that SDLC? They will ask you about that because they need to understand if you understand that and if you will be able to do that on your own without any supervision. And they will be looking for that person, that kind of person who can do that from scratch. So that's what's happening. Uh, so the people asking you questions during the interview to understand if you're a good fit for this position. But if you're a self-taught person and you have those skills and you're natural, you're just a nice person to talk to, they like you during the interview, you will get that job. Nobody will ask you, hey, uh, do you have a master's degree? Or hey, do you have some certification? If they need that, if there is a specific job that requires a certification, but there may be less than 1% of them on the market, then yes, they will, they will require something is that if there is something specific. But most of the jobs, most of the position don't require any certification or any level of education. What they require, there is a job description. There is some responsibilities uh, of that job. And if you comply, if you're a good fit for that position, you have those skills and you can explain what they need, that's it. You will get that job. So really certification, anything else, level of education, it doesn't matter. It really matters if, for example, you learned React 
you learn React JS and you are just developing your own projects, or maybe you did some freelance, or you did just some course uh, during some pro uh, did some projects during the courses, and you are a good React developer, and they are looking for React developer. You go to these guys, they ask you questions about uh, how to write some uh, functional component in React or class component in React, how to use Redux. If you answer the question, those questions, that's it. They will hire you because they need exactly the person you are. And that's it. So no certification, no level of education. You're 18 years old, graduated from the courses, learned React or mobile development right, uh, like React Native, they will hire you because you're a good fit. And that's it. Maybe a small portfolio of a programmer could help. Maybe some apps written. Yeah, usually uh, what we recommend, for example, uh, we never tell students, hey, guys, uh, you're good to go and just go to the market and look for a job. No, you have to continue. Uh, and yeah, I didn't tell you my story till then, but I will continue. So what happened to me, what made me successful, I was continuing. All the times, uh, once I learned uh, JavaScript, I learned React, I, I just didn't stop telling, hey, uh, I just learned I'm a good programmer right now. No, I continued. I just created my own project, was working on them. Right now we are giving students, we have uh, several uh, projects uh, we're working on. Uh, they are live projects and we just tell students, hey, you don't have to, it's for free. You just go and work on that project. Just continue developing yourself just continue working on that project and th that will be help for us. We will develop that project that will be help for you because you will continue growing and you will not forget what you're doing. And actually you will learn more and develop. But because what happened to me, uh, if you develop something, right? You, you think, hey, I need to develop this feature in my application. And you don't know how to do that. You go to Google, you search, you go to specific websites. When you search for your solution, then you implement this solution into your application and then you're wow i did that i did something new i didn't know before and you learn that on your own because you were doing that project so you never stop if you have possibility after the courses to stay on some project and continue while you're looking for a job do that stay on the project and continue doing that just spend one hour a day right two hours a day whatever you have just spend that time daily and continue working on the project. That will give you good benefits. That worked for me, that worked for many other guys. I will tell success stories and you will see how people get succeed just because of continuing working on something. And that's how it works. <clears throat> the criticism I've gotten from this plan is that is not a popular language like Python or JavaScript. Uh, no, why not? Just what you need to look is just go, for example, I believe in JavaScript. I know that Python is good as well, especially Python is popular right now for AI. Uh, most of the AI uh, programs right now are reading in Python. But uh, if you take um, automation, test automation, web development, the most popular framework right now is React. React is JavaScript. The most popular mobile framework right now is na uh, React Native. And there is a reason why, because uh, previously you had to write application for iOS separately. Then if you would like to port something, for example, there is application popular right now, um, um, Clubhouse, right? It is available for iOS only. And there is a problem because those guys created iOS application only, probably in Objective-C or something like that. and. In order to create application for Android, they have to hire another team to create separate project for Android. And they have to manage two projects for iOS, for Android. If they would like to create web application, they would like to, they need to hire web uh, developers and create third project. And instead of one project, you have to maintain three projects, th uh, have uh, three times more people so React, what React uh, uh, Native does is automatically creating three, uh, two versions, actually. You write everything in JavaScript and you have iOS compiled application and Android compiled application. And that's why, for example, Facebook Messenger, if you're using Facebook Messenger, it is in React Native. 
And it is super nice because you manage only single team. And that's why React Native is the most popular mobile framework right now, because most of the startups, especially, they think, hey, we don't have money to maintain three or two teams for iOS, for Android, for web uh, platform separately. We will take React Native and we will create a single code base, single team, and React Native will take care of the rest. It will compile uh, iOS and Android application automatically. And you have a single code, but several applications. So that's why it's popular. And if you just go in Google, uh, the most popular lang uh, coding language is 2021. You will see that JavaScript, Python, Java, sometimes they are just switching, but they have, di they have different uh, purposes. For example, Java is good for some uh, microservices, for some um, uh, servers because Java is language created for uh, something that starts and runs for years. For example, your refrigerator or some, some, other, some other thing that runs for years without rebooting, right? So that's Java. It compiles for a long time. It takes some time to load and then it runs for years. JavaScript is different. JavaScript is browser language. So you need to just quickly open it, do something and close it. So that's why JavaScript right now is beating Java, right? Uh, previously, Java was super popular for test automation. Right now, JavaScript has uh, way more popularity in test automation because Java was never created for test automation. Since uh, till 2009, there was no compiler for JavaScript. JavaScript was only uh, browser language. And in 2009, uh, Node.js uh, was released and since that time, JavaScript became the most popular language for test automation. And there is a reason, because it was created to open browser, do something and close it quickly, right? And we had, and we do with automation the same. We quickly open, test, 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 and close it. So JavaScript was like created for test automation. So that's why it's uh, super popular for uh, test automation right now. If you go and uh, search the most popular test automation frameworks, you will find Cypress, you will find WebDriver.io, and they are JavaScript based. And uh, there is a thing called MERN. So it means, uh, so you can be full stack developer knowing JavaScript only right now. You know React and React is the most popular front end web development uh, framework right now. It is JavaScript. Then you take your server and use uh, Express.js. Express.js is JavaScript. Then you uh, connect MongoDB, which is free to use, and you have your full stack, which is front end, back end, and database, everything in JavaScript. So that's why it's popular because right now companies just switching uh, to React. For example, if you, I don't know, go to any company, for example, Apple using React, Facebook actually the company uh, who maintains React, who maintains React Native and React. Facebook is like uh, taking that part and they are maintaining, they have people who maintain React uh, and create new libraries, new modules and so on. Um, our company, React, Apple, React, Microsoft, React, everybody is right now using React, HP, React, everybody's using React, why? Because it's popular. And when it's popular, you have huge community and you have a problem, you just go and search and there's, there are solutions. That's why Python is uh, super popular right now for AI. AI is quickly developing right now. So that's why Python is super popular. So I don't know who can tell you that Python or JavaScript are not popular. They are super popular. And if you take the most popular languages right now, I would tell you that it's Python, JavaScript, and Java, three languages for main purposes. But if you take the most popular, probably it will be JavaScript because it's used everywhere. Uh, if you mm, go to, um, um, GitHub, GitHub uh, usually creates statistics uh, yearly, uh, and they uh, they publish how many repos they have on GitHub in which languages uh, those people use. So JavaScript is the most popular there because it's it's easy to uh, to learn people just using that, um, and it's it has multiple like um, uh, implementations, so you can use it for automation web development, mobile development, backend development. So that's why it's the most popular. Python is super popular. And again, people ask me why 
uh, Python is not popular. No, it is popular, super popular. <clears throat> I have applied uh, over 300 positions, got four interviews, only two went to stage two. I don't know what's wrong. Uh, is this market overwhelmed with applicants? No, uh, the funny part, guys, there are more jobs on the US market than applicants. There are more jobs on the US markets than applicants. And you, you can imagine the case, for example, there are a thousand jobs, for example, and then 500 applicants. These 500 applicants apply to every job from that list. 500 applicants apply to thousand positions. And you then see, hey, five, I apply for this position and there are 499 other people apply. So it's like 500 people per place. So seems like, there are more people than jobs, but it's vice versa. Right now, there is a problem. In, on the US market, there are more jobs than uh, uh, applicants. And that's why we are giving uh, uh, work visas to other people from other countries and bringing them here because we don't have enough people inside, right? So that's why this visa still exists. Yes. Uh, I saw you. Uh, yes. So, do you have a question? Yeah, I was just saying that uh, I wanted to learn C, but like it's not as popular language as Java or JavaScript. That's what it's not commonly taught. But I like to learn. I really want to learn like the old school computer science, you know, way of like learning C and C plus plus, and like and like I just thought like there's not really much of a market for C anymore as there used to be, and like even like I don't even if I don't like learn even if i don't know javascript or like python as that well could i still get the job like doing like in those languages like just because i have the computer science knowledge yeah of course uh, so uh, i had many cases when for example we didn't have good candidates and we needed people uh for javascript automation but they were not good people and there was a guy uh, java there was a guy uh from python and we just hired them and they just they quickly learn JavaScript because if you know one programming language, it's easy to learn the second one because you because every, everything is super similar. There are some tiny differences usually, but everything is super similar. For example, if you know JavaScript, there are tiny differences from Python. You can easily learn Python and vice versa. If you knew Python, learn Python, then you can easily switch to JavaScript. And we were doing that many times. So I had experience hiring people uh with python but they were doing javascript automation it took some time for them maybe a few weeks to learn and start doing but yes it is possible i uh, no, you have to think about programming paradigms when you when you say this because i had the experience where i knew javascript super well but then i went to like a like a coding boot camp or like a coding school where like they're teaching c everything is a c i was like i was struggling i didn't i didn't complete the program it's like i was like man i wish i studied c instead of start javascript like i would have been like I would have been ahead, but like, yeah, if you do the this, what... C is a bit complicated. Yeah. yeah. C language is, I, I used to learn it as well. And it was complex for me as well. So I understand what you're talking about. So yes. Uh, but I, I, I can tell you that C is still popular. So there are some jobs in C language. And again, uh, C language is used for many things. Even I believe Node.js is, uh, is based on C, C++ if I'm not mistaken. So even a runtime for JavaScript is created in C because it's a different level of language, of course. So yes, and knowing C, it's something different, right? Because uh, JavaScript is popular because right now you don't have to know uh, many details. You have a lot of libraries. You learned React in two months. Of course, then two more months JavaScript basics, then two months React, so four months path. And then you can become a React developer. And since a lot of companies, a lot of startups, they just develop mobile applications or website, web services, you don't have to know C, right? Because everything is already created. So there is somebody had to know C to create Node.js or to create some applications for Apple, for example, for MacBook, right? But once you have that, you don't have to know that language anymore because you have the system, you just take that piece and implement it. So right now, uh, we are not developing everything from scratch. So Node.js, uh, NPM, uh, Node Packet Manager, right now has over 1 million created modules 
ready to use. So you never create something from scratch. You just go and search, um, for example, drop down for React, you find it. Um, YouTube API for React and you download already created program. You just install that module and just use it. You didn't have to create that logic from scratch connect to YouTube, you know, to build in uh, that YouTube player in your, into your website. You already have that implementation and they have API clear. They have documentation. They say, hey, just install our module and this is how to use it. So you, are, you just create, you just take pieces and create your application out of those pieces. So that's why more people just, they choose JavaScript or Python because there are libraries and there are modules they, uh, already created and you didn't have to learn it for a lot of, for a long time. You're just ready to go in a few months. That's why probably. And many startups, they didn't do something, you know, something um, too complex, something like new, no, uh, new uh, phone or new laptops. They're just creating some applications. They are just creating web applications or mobile applications. For mobile application or for web application, you don't have to know C. You just learn JavaScript, Python, and just sit. You're good to go. That's why. Okay, <clears throat> Divya, I have six years of experience in software QA. Okay, including two years in enterprise. Okay, I have nine years gap in my career. I, I did an unpaid internship for a year remotely. I have been, so unpaid, you mean like you were working for them but they didn't pay you, right? For a year, right? <clears throat> I've been looking for work from the past two years and I haven't even got an interview call. Any tips on what uh, can I do differently? Um, it's hard to say, Divya. I think uh, the best way probably is to do some mock interviews, take a look at your resume and see what's happening. Maybe you need just to hide your gap and pretend that you just have less years of experience. I don't know. Maybe some, some people just overqualify you for those roles. So there may be a lot of different reasons. Uh, what I would also suggest, you go to some automation course, uh, take automation. Uh, you will have fresh knowledge, you will have uh, fresh vision, some new skills, and you will be able to apply for more jobs. Right now, there is a good market because you are not limited by your local area you are you you can apply for any position across the united states of uh, like most of them are remote jobs right now and they are even mentioned that in job description so remote only so this right now market is super good super nice i like it uh i never saw so many for example i'm interested in management positions because i am a manager right now and uh, it's so you know i i i cannot even look at that because I try not to apply, but there are so many positions right now I can apply to. So it's really, it's hard to resist. And I'm just, I'm even joking sometimes to myself, hey, Arthur, maybe I need to try. I need to go and try. Okay, uh, Divya. Yeah, um, yeah, so yeah, in terms of learning automation, there is just so many tools out there. Can you suggest a few to start with? Because obviously every job profile or job description asks for a different tool. And even if I just count per week all the jobs that are available, I can come up with two tools for every job description. Mm -hmm. so, I, yeah. will, I would suggest you JavaScript. Okay. And I will tell you what. So there are two probably the most popular frameworks. Uh, one of them is Cypress, is the most popular yeah. framework. It has like... Uh, about 2 million downloads if you go to NPM and you will see that there are 2 million downloads weekly, weekly, not monthly, not year, not annually, year, uh, weekly. Uh, and it is simple, pretty simple. It has some limitations. For example, you, don't, you cannot test mobile devices, but it's uh, widely used uh, because uh, most of the startups, they're doing some web uh, development uh, React applications, there are web-based applications, right? So people using that because it's easy to use. It's pretty nice framework. It saves your state in the browser. So if something fails, it gives you browser in that exact state when it failed. So you can even click and see what failed. Uh, 
so it's really nice. Uh, if you want something more advanced, WebDriver.io on, based on JavaScript. And why JavaScript? Because I don't see people stopping at automation level. Once you learn JavaScript basics, then you go to test automation, you learn test automation, it takes about four months. And then what you can do from, from automation, you can go to uh, React development, you can become front-end developer. And that's what happened to many of my students. They went to React development after automation. And after that, you can go to full stack development. You can learn um, backend, you can learn Express and Express is super easy. Is React, for example, it's really difficult to learn comparing to uh, Express. Express is simple. You just created a server, and now you're full stack. And then you can learn, again, JavaScript. You can go and learn React Native. And then you're a mobile developer. So you can know everything. You can know React. You can be a mobile developer. You can be full stack developer, connect your database, and you can even create your own startup just knowing only single JavaScript. So that's why I would suggest JavaScript. If you are interested in AI, in artificial, artificial intelligence, uh, then I would invest time in Python. So it depends. And uh, what about like the one year internship that I did? It was not really an internship. That's what I put on my resume. It's more like I wouldn't put it as, a, do you put it as internship or just regular experience, regular job? Divya, seems like you disappeared. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, so probably something happened to Divya's. Okay, so let me then continue. <sighs> Andre is asking what level of English should be for to apply. Um, to apply, you can have any level of English, but to get a job, uh, the minimum level of English is very simple, is when you need, uh, can understand people, what they uh, are asking you, and you can answer so they understand you, and that's it. So, and again, I'm trying to get to that success and failure stories, but I'm answering your questions. So I will tell you a good example good example about the level of English because I had a person we just trusted. We just trusted that person. We invested. We believed in that person. Even brought person with terrible level of English. But it worked so well. So now nobody can tell me, hey, uh, never bring people with bad English. No, because it worked so well. And I have experience hiring people with bad English. I used to work with Chinese guys uh, at Apple with bad English. I used to work uh, with uh, Russian speaking people with bad English, but all of them were super nice. Of course, uh, that's, there is no correlation to say, hey, people with bad English better than others. No, there were just people. They were super nice. They were the best candidate for that position, but they had bad English. And we thought, hey, what is most important for us? English, communication skills, or they technical skills? and their personality, they are just nice people. So let's, let's try, let's hire them. So we hired and it, wor it worked so well, so you cannot even imagine. So really English doesn't matter. Uh, people, uh, you know, often people just, you know, they stress because they think, okay, I have a bad English and I cannot pass the interview. You need to relax. You need to understand that there is your goal. Again, we come to the same point. Motivation. If you have motivation and you say, hey, I will do my best to get this job, you will get that job. And really doesn't matter what level of English you have. Because if you're a nice person and you can explain in simplest words, you know, you can explain something, you can understand people, you can answer your question, those questions, just in simplest English you have, you will get that job. Just be nice person. Just be motivated. Just be the person they will hire emotionally. And that's it. That's what they're, they're looking for. Uh, actually, uh, when we hired that person, uh, there was another candidate. He was technically strong. He was a good speaker. He, was, he had great English. Uh, he had great communication skills. But he was not so nice person to work with. 
You know, you feel that during the interview, when you talk to uh, people, you feel that, hey, this is not so nice person to work with. And that guy is amazing. I would love to work with him. Yes, his English is bad, but he's super nice person to work with. And we hired that one without good English. He was bad. He was trying, but he it worked super well. And I will tell you about him more a little bit later. Okay. The market seems to value JavaScript and Python more than C language. Yes, uh, that's because uh, that's because again, how I tell you right now, in order to do startup or open your new project, you don't have to create something from scratch. Something you need to learn C and create your module or some uh, microservice from scratch. Right now, you have just modules already created, published on the internet. You just download them and use them. And JavaScript and Python uh, libraries, they are huge. And for example, right now, in order to create mobile application, I just install React Native in 30 minutes and I start writing my code. And I have a mobile application and that's it. Why do I need to learn and create something from scratch? Create operational system or create something like Android or some application on, or native Android. I don't need to do that. Because right now there are a lot of um, different frameworks that build that code, compile that code for you. You write in JavaScript and that React Native compiles parallelly uh, iOS and Android application for you. So you don't have to know C, that's why. That's why in many startups, they doing mobile or uh, web applications. So that's why you just need people and it's easy to learn many people learn that many people do their own stuff, own startups. And that's, that's why. Okay, <clears throat> so let's continue with my story. So once I moved to Bay Area, um, I was, um, I was learning JavaScript at that time. Uh, and I can tell you that when I was interviewed by Apple, I didn't answer some questions. By that time, well, I was learning JavaScript. And I applied for a position, and there actually were, were three positions. Manual tester, uh, automation tester, and QE lead. Uh, and I applied for this position, and I came to the interview. They tell me, hey, we have three positions, and we will be considering you for all three of them. And uh, they asked me some questions. They gave me some tasks in JavaScript, so I solved them. And then they asked me, hey, what is... Uh, what did, what did they ask me? Uh, what is callback? What is callback? And I said, I don't know. And that was honest because by that time, I was still learning JavaScript and I didn't learn what the callback is by that time. And I honestly tell them, hey, I don't know what it, what it is, but guys, uh, don't worry. I will just, Right now, I will open Google right now in, in 30 minutes. I will tell you what that is. And I will even will be writing a code with that. And that's what they like. They say, hey, yes, this guy is just motivated. And guess what? They offered me QA lead position. Not manual, not automation, QA lead position. I was a lead at Apple. So this is how it works. Because if you come to interview, you are relaxed you are just smiling. You're just a nice person to work with. And they say, hey, guy, uh, hey, this guy is responsible. It's visible. He is responsible. He is mature, right? Because there are some people, they come, hey, 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 come, you know, smiling. They, they look like kids. You never look at them seriously. Uh, you never hire them because they are not serious. You never think about, uh, think about them as about responsible people. So then you see a person in front of you and that person is responsible nice to work with nice to talk to and you hire that person emotionally if you can sell yourself as a solution for their problem and they have a problem let's say and when i joined apple i understood their problem because they had like 90, 80 percent of people doing nothing they're not motivated they just want to come to a job sit without doing nothing, get a salary at the end of the month and just sit and then continue doing nothing. And they need motivated people who will drive the project, who will drive the automation, 
who will drive some processes. And they're looking for people like that. If you come and you, they see a fire in your eyes, and if you're willing to help, you're willing to work, and if you show them this willingness, right? If you show them that you are super motivated, if you are proactive, they will hire you. They will hire you, even if you didn't answer some questions. But tell honestly, guys, I don't know the answer for this question, but I will be the first one who will know this. I will be the first one. There are some tips, uh, probably this uh, topic for another webinar, how to do, we, 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 uh, in our school, we do a lot of uh, mock interviews, a lot of tips, how to pass interview, we train students, we do mock interviews, we see what they are doing incorrectly, and then we try to fix that. And that's not one hour, that's, uh, we probably do at least six, six lessons for that for just mock interviews only. So we try to figure out the problems, we talk about them, we, we try to say, hey, don't do this, instead do that. You had to ask that question, for example, question about ideal candidate is must have. So there are a lot of tips, but uh, actually if you went to some school, they had to explain that to you, how to pass the interview, how to create a great resume, that's, that's I don't know, that's mandatory. Because knowing something technically is good. You will answer questions. But if you will be a person they don't like, you technically strong. But if they don't like you as a personality, they will never hire you. So you don't have to think that you're technically strong, you know, automation and you're good to go. No, you have to be just nice and natural person to get that job. That's what is super important. Don't think about technical side only because people hire emotionally. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I'm, uh, I'm reading your. Uh, let's, let's, uh, let's discuss this a little bit later because we still have agenda. I'm trying to follow and I'm not. I'm not able to do that. So what happened? What happened then? Uh, then when I joined Apple, uh, I was uh, taking courses and maybe, you know, uh, guys, uh, a school called Passive. So actually at that time, uh, Victor just started and I knew these guys because we, uh, uh, I used to know them from Sacramento. They used to live in Sacramento and Dasha was, uh, uh, conducting mafia games and I was uh, I love mafia and I came from Ukraine I found them here and I joined so I met Ma Dasha I met uh, Victor and after that they moved to Bay Area and they told me hey uh, we are just starting some course for free it was only JavaScript course there were only seven people including me so we learned JavaScript only and after some time when I joined Apple I came they came to to us they uh, was our they were our guests because we never n knew anybody in bay area right in silicon valley they were the only family uh, i also love my game well, come to sacramento we have that a lot <clears throat> so we met at our apartment in santa clara and i suggested i said hey victor let's do the following i'm i'm like famous person in qa education in Ukraine. So let's do the following. Let me, uh, there was one problem because most of the schools, they are still doing that. They teach people manual only, right? So maybe some of you, they uh, learned manual testing and that's the problem. Some schools, they, they teach people only manual testing. And after that, when you look for a job in manual testing and there is an automation course, but as a prerequisite for automation is manual testing. So you have to complete manual and then you can apply for automation. But it's ridiculous in my opinion, because uh, you learn a manual, you spend some time, and then you have to start and do coding basics first because you need to learn coding basics first. And only then you can apply and do automation because automation is separate skill. You take a framework and just start using your skills in coding to create tests. But prior to that, you need to learn basics 
how to loop through something, right? Some arrays, objects, variables, and everything else. You need to learn those basics. And I thought, hey, this is ridiculous. There is a problem, so let's fix this problem. So since you're um, JavaScript teacher, so let's do the following. I will teach people QA, and parallelly, you will teach them uh, JavaScript basics. And after that, in two months, I will start doing test automation with them. And then what happened? That worked. But that worked, but uh, after a year, I left. I didn't really like uh, their approach because they created a business. And uh, we started to get like 100 students. Um, and if you have 100 students, you didn't have enough attention to everybody, right? So what I was feeling, I was feeling bad because I cannot give enough attention to people. And I was really tired. I was not feeling good. My uh, goal, my life vision is probably to do something during my life, something that will help others, maybe create something that will help people, that will help humanity, I don't know, something like that. So my life makes sense. So I was not feeling good. I was thinking about something, some maybe startup, something like that. And I was not feeling good because I was not helping people. I was feeling like a part of business just to make money. And if you, for example, go to pass right now. So the automation course is created by me. If you don't know that, now you know. <clears throat> this is the course created by me. Uh, then I left and I moved to Sacramento. Uh, my wife uh, had a business here already and it was more successful than the business we started in uh, Silicon Valley. So we have decided to move back. I quickly found a job here actually as a manager. Right now I am a QA manager. Um, and I moved to Sac back to Sacramento and right now I'm here. And after that, like 20 people separately asked me, Hey, conduct a course for me. I conducted a course like in this, actually in this, in this room, I conducted course for 20 people in this room. And, um, it's like a small meeting room here and it was very successful. Uh, 70% of people found the job. And the reason was. Very simple, because that was not a hundred people on the course. There were only 20 people and I had, everybody had enough attention and 70% of people found a job. And even the rest of people, they didn't find a job due to personal reasons. Because um, some, for example, one of my friends and the, all of them are my friends uh, right now. And one of them, uh, he decided to stop looking for a job because uh, they just had a baby. And he said, I will stay in my current job because I need benefits I have there. And once we have probably, uh, I have better situation then I will start looking. Other guy, he moved to um, Los Angeles and uh, he used to work in veterinary business back in Europe. So he decided to go in that direction. So some people, they just had personal reasons. And I know only one person who right now uh, still looking for a job, but all, the rest of people, they found a the job and that's it. And again, guys, I was not doing anything special. I was just talking to them as to you right now, just trying to motivate them, telling them, hey, you, you have to continue doing your job. You have to continue. You have to continue applying because applying and going to the interview is a job and you have to do that. And that's why they were doing for some of them. It took 10 months. 10 months and it's like half failure story, half success story. Because at the end, that guy uh, got senior uh, software developer in test position, senior after the course. So that's a, that's a good story. But on the other hand, it took 10 months. So again, it's all about motivation. Just imagine him looking for a job for 10 months, but not stopping, but continuing doing that and finally getting senior software developer in test position. That's amazing. That's amazing. And of course they are happy. His family is happy, full-time benefits, senior position. Wow, that's super nice. And you need to understand that they are regular people. They are like you. What is different? Probably at some point they just realized, hey, I have to do this because I have my goal. I have to do this because I have my motivation. And this is what motivates me. 
That's why I would like to continue doing that. And they continued and they got their job. Uh, look at me. For example, right now I'm super stressed, guys. I will be honest with you, I'm super stressed. Uh, recently we started new courses with my uh, colleague and it's really hard because my goal was, so why I started courses again? Uh, for me, it was tough decision because I was telling myself, I, I don't want to do courses because it's tough. I don't spend time with my family. But then I was watching some video on YouTube and some blogger, some business blogger, uh, told in that video that hey uh, if you don't want if you don't know what to do and i was not knowing what to do because i was doing i was trying to do something maybe start some startup or something like that trying to do something my own and i didn't know what to do and that blogger said hey if you don't know what to do start with what you know the best and after that you will figure that out and then i realized okay in order to start something to start a startup, for example, right? I need people. I cannot do that on my own. I need some co-founders. I need some people, some nice people I can trust, uh, some super motivated people. They would like to change the world. They are better. How can I find them? And they are, then I remember that what I learned from that company, I uh, used to work in Ukraine, that there are always genius people on the courses, right? They are all genius people. And I realized, hey, okay, let's then do courses. Let's do courses again. So we are again doing courses and we are again teaching people. And But our goal is uh, we don't do business, right? So our goal is clear. We tell to everybody who joined us, uh, like recently, uh, two more teachers joined us. And our main goal is building a community. So, and it's really tough. And I really stressed because what happens? We have to compete with other uh, with other courses, and it's really hard for me. For example, I was super demotivated two days ago, and my wife just helped me. I just said, "Okay, enough." I just spent two hours with my wife. We just sat, we watched TV, you know, talking about many things, and she motivated me. She told me, "Hey, let's do this. Let's do this." And what is your goal? And I said, "My goal is to create something great, something." important right and she said okay what do you need to do for that and i said this is what i'm planning to do but it's really hard i'm really stressed and she said hey but that's the only way right you just need to continue just relax and just do your best and that's it and see what happens and it's really hard for example uh we had a call from job easy and guys from job easy they wanted to buy us they they said tell us hey we want you to do test automation we know that your test automation is great we know that Arthur, you created test automation for PASS. So we would like you to join our team. And we have a team from 100 people. We have like 100 people back in Russia uh, who are doing marketing for us. And really, it's really, guys, it's hard to compete. Like we are for people. We have two teachers. Uh, Job is a scam. It's not a, I mean, it's not a scam. They just have a team of marketing, marketing team. And they just selling you product, right? They're they're not just selling you like career or uh, motivation. They are just selling you product. They know how to do that, and it's really hard to compete with them. And I'm super demotivated sometimes, but I'm continue doing that. Why? We come to the same point. Motivation. I have motivation, and we have only two teachers. Me and Sergey teaching again. Sergey is mostly working on technical side of the applications, of the course, and everything else. And I'm the main guy talking to people, answering calls. Uh, you know, uh, people calling to me, asking for help with resumes, with interviews, and I'm helping them. But I'm still. It's hard to compete with those uh, companies. Uh, with Pass, they have team uh, selling their courses. Uh, Job Easy, uh, Test Pro, they all have a uh, team, uh, marketing team, and they're just selling. They know how to sell, they know how to call you, what to tell you, how to sell you, and they're doing that. And it's really hard to compete, but we are just have a vision. What we have is just a vision. We have a mission. We are not business. And what we need to do is, for example, why we brought new teachers. We had the meeting with them and Julia, who recently joined us, he used to work at PASF uh, uh, also. Uh, and she was not feeling good there because 
because they have just a business. They don't have a like vision or they are not building a community. What we are, why she's trying to do, she says, I have a plan. I would like to uh, have my students to participate in some uh, startup testing. For example, many startups, they don't have money to test their products, right? But they are easy to give some, their product to do some POC testing. And we can do that for them, right? And she has a plan to work with many start startups, you know, and get products for them to uh, use students to test those products. That's a good, really great experience for students to work in some startup on a real project to participate in something important, something bigger, right? And that's a great plan. And it's like, hey, then we have the same vision because what we are doing with Sergey, we are building a community. Okay, our goal. Right, our motivation is to create something bigger, something important at the end, some startup. For that, we need people, and we know. Okay, we will be. Uh, we are doing courses, and um, if uh, we will be having students, and for sure, some of those students will be people we need. They will become our friends, and uh, they uh, will become our partners, and maybe we will start some uh start startups or some something bigger we'll do something bigger with them that's what drives us right and even despite the fact that's really hard to compete with others and they are they have marketing teams but we are just doing our stuff we don't need 100 students we are limiting our uh, limiting our groups because we would like to give attention to everybody and we don't need a lot of people because we are not making money we just need right people if we have right people, even three people, but they are right people, they are super motivated, that's awesome because that's what our goal. We need to find these awesome people. And this is how it works right now. So my students, for example, they work at uh, Apple, Microsoft, uh, Google, HP. And right now, what happens right now, they're just reaching out to me saying, hey, we have two openings. And guess what happened? Uh, one of my students, uh, she got the recently, not recently, like a year ago, a lead position at HP. Right now, they hired already in her team two of other my students for senior positions. Two other students joined HP and uh, her team uh, as senior uh, engineers. And she was reaching out to me, telling, hey, recommend me a people because she knows how I teach, right? So that's how we build the community. I know, hey, I have a team there. I have team at HP. Then I have, since I was uh, working at Apple, I have a big team there. So I have many people working there. And now what happens? They, they call me and say, hey, Arthur, I have interview at Apple. I say, okay, who are the interviewers? Do you have that information? And they say, yes, this and this. And I say, oh, great, I know those people. So just relax, just be natural, uh, try to be nice and they will hire you. And at the end, not at the beginning, but at the end, just tell them, hey, hello from Arthur. And that's nice. And right now I have many people working there. And what happens right now, recently one of my students again got a job there and they just called me, hey, like we just hired Vlad, nice guy, thank you and so on. So that's how it works. You have that community. And right now Vlad is helping us. He's an amazing guy. He's helping us with uh, our application. So we already found one great student we need to work with, right? So that's what we are doing. We are just, and that's what motivates me. So again, guys, if you're looking for a job, just think about me. I'm dealing with big companies and trying to compete with them. And I'm super stressed, but I'm still doing that. I'm still trying to do my best. And are you looking just for a job? And that's it, that's, that's fine. Just go to one interview, fail, that's okay. Go to another one. Of course, if you fail, you need to understand what happened and why. And you need to fix that, improve that skill, and move forward. And that's it. That's what you do. If you feel bad English, do the same as I did. Write a story about yourself in Russian or your language, translate it to English, learn it, and then just use it. Because the, most of the questions are the same. They are asking you the same questions during the interview. Tell me about yourself, about your project, and blah 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 questions are the same learn that and just use that knowledge and that's it you will get that job just be natural relaxed try to be uh, just person they would like to work with and that's it
So I will tell you about failure stories first again. So I had many students and there was, so I had one student, she was like super amazing. She was super amazing. She was the best. She was really the best. She was doing as twice work as others. She was completing all the homeworks and doing even more. So for example, the homework was to create something. She was creating that and plus doing something additionally, spending more time looking for some other solutions and doing that. So she was super amazing. But guess what? She didn't get a job till now. And it was like three years ago. And why that happened? Because she was super nice. She technically strong, but she didn't have that motivation. She didn't, she was afraid going to the market. She, uh, that was not the case that she was looking for a job and she couldn't uh, find, but she was not even looking for a job. And that was the problem. The other problem that is possible. I had one more student and actually he was my boss on siding. So when I just came to the United States, I found that job on siding as a handyman. And uh, I remember us driving in a truck to one of the, our projects. And uh, I told him, hey, I would like to go to IT. I am a software tester and I used to work in Ukraine. So my plan is to go to IT once I get my documents. And he said, no, that's a scam. I knew a lot of schools. I know a lot of people. They never find a job. Uh, that's not working. No, I. That's not true. That's a scam. And I and I told him, Hey, man, I'm. I have an experience, right? I'm. I'm the guy from from IT. I'm your evidence that it's possible and it's doable. But he was not trusting me. What happened? I joined Apple and I started to do courses. And guess what? He came to my courses as a student. And he told me, hey, I was wrong, man. He honestly told me, hey, I was wrong. And I realized that that's, that's true and that's a good way. And he was great. Actually, he was really smart. He was a great guy. He was one of the best. He was looking for a job for 10 months. And I was not understanding what's happening. Many people were calling me. I was giving references saying, hey, he's a great guy. I would love to work with him. Yeah, yeah but nothing happened. And guess what? Why? Because he was not accepting um, junior or middle positions. And he was looking only for senior or lead position. He got lead position. He got that position in 10 months, uh, which is like great, but he was looking for that job for 10 months. And he used to, he, had, he has to work on siting. He has to continue working on siting and look for that job for 10 months. So my suggestion will be, because maybe some of you also have that problem. If you get manual position or you're looking for automation, just take that job and start working. If you find another job in a month, just that's okay. You just leave and take that job. That is okay. But do not look for that job for your dream job too long, because uh, maybe you will be super demotivated. Maybe you will give up. Right. So my suggestion will be if you get a simple position as possible, take that position and just start working there and then continue looking for a job. That what happened to him, he didn't do that. He just was looking for 10 months and he had to work on siting. But uh, it would be better for him if he just accepts any job and then... Uh, and then just uh, continue looking for that dream job he had. And third uh, failure story is, is, again, one of the guys who recently joined um, HP. Yes, he was looking for 10 months and he got senior as that position, which is awesome because uh, getting senior position after the courses is super nice. Uh, but it took 10 months for him. And his reason was uh, a little bit different. He was a little bit demotivated. So I had to talk to him many times. I, I invited him many times to Mafia because that's probably the only free time I have. And, and I told me, hey, come and we'll, we'll talk. And I was trying to motivate him. Hey, telling, hey, continue looking, continue looking. And he finally found a job, but he had two main problems. Uh, English, he was better in English. 
And second, he was a little bit demotivated and he was about to give up. So never give up. You will do that. Just try and uh, just remind yourself why you are doing this. Just remind yourself why you are doing this. Because if you will be giving up, um, you will never know if what would happen if you go forward. Because sometimes, you know, there are two um, options you have. One option is give up. Another option is continue. If you give up, it's 100% failure. 100% failure. You give up. That's it. You know that you quit and that's it. If you take this second option, which is continue doing what you're doing, it actually applies not only for job search, it applies for business, it applies for everything. You take this risk and maybe chance is low, maybe chance is 1%, 2%, 5%, but there is a chance. And there is maybe 95% of failure here, but there is a chance of success, success right? This case is 100% failure. So always choose this one. Choose uh, option when you continue looking and try to motivate yourself again and again. Okay, now about success stories. That's the most important thing. That's why you need to learn from them. For example, my <clears throat> co-founder, Sergey. He was my student uh, and he was learning uh, he was learning the course from Belarus. At that time he was at Belarus and he was uh, bad at English. Yeah, he was bad at English, but he was technically strong and he was really good night, uh, guy. So he was um, going through the interview process from Belarus. He um, created the Google Voice account he purchased a uh, uh, United States phone. It, actually, it's free, as I remember. It's free on Google Voice. If you uh, just first one is free. And he was using that number to have calls uh, and to get to the interviews, right? He was just, I remember he, he uh, told some reason why he cannot come to in, uh, in person interview, like let's do Skype interview. But he passed. He passed, and he was the guy actually we trusted in, right? Uh, we believed in. So he was bad at English and we had a decision to uh, hire super technically strong guy and good communication skills or hire Sergey, which is also, uh, who is also technically strong and super nice guy to work with. And emotionally, we already bought Sergey, but we were deciding communication skills. And we said, yeah, let's, let's try. Let's give a chance to Sergey. And we did that. And what happened, he comes to the United States and his first day of job, the next day after he comes. So he just had a flight yesterday. Today he's uh, working his first day. And guess what? He just took the laptop. And since he was my student, he knew what to do. And he just created a code. He was animation guy. Uh, we hired him as automation uh, engineer. He created code on day one. Uh, we hired another person. He, he, she was my student uh, as well. And she was more like a lead. And my boss, Tony, uh, he liked her like so much. So he just said, okay, we hire her first and then the rest people. So she got the job first. And she was more like great communication skills. Uh, she was, uh, she had some experience from Canada working with people. She was super nice. She was my student. So they both, they created code on day one if everybody uh, was amazed. They came to me and said, hey, Arthur, who are those guys? They are so amazing. And they like, they, everybody was amazed. Be these are succeed stories. Again, and you need to understand that they were, they both were uh, after the courses. They had the knowledge, uh, the same knowledge as the other guys, but they were just nice people to work with. And both uh, Sergey and another person, they were hired emotionally, right? She was hired because my boss liked her and uh, we made a decision uh, to bring Sergey because he was just a nice person to work with, despite the fact that he was bad in English. 
So that's, again, another motivation for you. If other people do that, you need to understand that as well. English doesn't matter. Technical skills doesn't matter. Of course, you need to have some uh, level of technical skills to be able to do that job. If you're able to do that job, what matters next, what will make those people make a decision is your um, uh, skill, soft skill, right? How nice person you are and uh, how can you sell yourself? How, if you're natural during the interview, if you're just a nice person, they will hire you. And remember these stories because we hired these guys because they were nice, just nice people to work with, not just super technically strong or with a lot of years of experience. Remember, they were just students after the course. Of course, we created good resumes for them. We just changed their previous experience, making it like tech uh, test experience, test automation experience. Of course, we did all of that as the others do, but they were just nice people to work with. That's the only reason why they hire, we hired them. And we recently hired a few more people uh, and one of them <clears throat> just was super nice. And uh, it started from HR. So he applied, uh, he also was my student and he just applied for a manual position. And uh, he had a call with uh, our HR, Lacey. And I had a call with Lacey asking, hey, how, uh, how it went? And she said, oh, He's amazing. I just love him. And this is the feedback you would like to get, right? And she, she's just HR, but that matters because everything starts from her. And she didn't ask him any technical questions. She just asked him some regular questions, but he was natural. He had some problems with microphone or, or with the laptop, but he was honest. Oh, I'm so, so sorry. I am, I'm having these problems with laptop. And he was natural. He was uh, telling sorry, 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 super, super many times because he was really sorry for the problems he had with his laptop. And he sold himself uh, just doing that. And she was super nice. He was super nice. Uh, he was just natural. He was trying to be nice, smile, you know, be natural. And she liked him. Then I scheduled a few more interviews, cross-functional interviews with development team, with other guys, with my boss. Everybody liked him. Everybody. And only me who was interviewing him in technical skills, but I already knew uh, his technical skills because I was uh, teaching him, right? But the other people just loved him and they told me, hey, hire him. He's a super nice guy, hire him. I, I didn't have to even uh, talk to people and telling him about his technical side because they all want to bring him. Those are su success stories. <clears throat> so I, I was hiring many of my students. I was hiring students with others from other schools as well. And I exactly know, looking at their uh, resumes uh, from where they come and which school they graduated. And if they are super nice, I will hire them. Because what happened, for example, I had one failure story, as, uh, actually. I had one student, he was so great. I, was, I wanted to hire him. Even during the courses, I told him, hey, man, I will hire you. I need you. You're like super good. He was super good. He was doing more than others. He was helping other students with the answering questions when other students had questions, right? And uh, I told him, hey, man, I will hire you. So you're super good. So, but what happened? We had strange process when all people uh, for a full-time position go through CEO. And he didn't go through that interview. He had that interview and our CEO just didn't like him. And that's it. He was super technically strong and I was trying to fix that. I was going through my, to my boss telling, hey, we, we have to give him a second chance. We went to CEO and he told us, no guys, there is no way he will join our company because I don't like him. And our CEO has his own vision. He, he has his own vision, how people have to probably be a part of his vision uh, and be a part of our company family. And he just didn't like him. And that's it. You're technically strong. You're nice guys. You're a nice guy. Your manager want to hire you. Uh, manager's boss who want to hire you. Developers 
other people who interviewed him, everybody said, hire him. But CEOs told us, no, there is no way he's coming. There is no way we hire him because just emotionally, he didn't like him. And that's it. That's what's happening. So you need to understand that really, in real, your technical skills, they matter just to be in compliance with some uh, job description, with to be on one level and with the other candidates, but will play mandatory role, but we will play the main role in your higher decision is how you will be natural or will be just person they like. That's the only uh, thing that matters. That's it. <clears throat> Hope guys, this motivates you. Uh, ah, yeah, I didn't finish about Sergey. So again, that's the story about JavaScript, about motivation. So what we did with Sergey, he joined as a automation tester. And then just in a month or so, I told him, hey man, uh, let me teach you React. Just after work, just let's stay, take a meeting room uh, and let's, Let's do several lessons in React. Why? Because for you, it will be a good learning process. You will learn React. Maybe you will uh, get some React job in the future. For me, it's a help because I was creating, uh, again, uh, application for Mafia. That's my, uh, that was my own project for Mafia in React. And I said, hey, let me teach you and you will just help me. And you will learn in that way. You will be helping me learning. And that's what we will do. And he said, yes, let's do that. So we probably mm, had four lessons, just theory. Uh, and then after that, I uh, put him on the project and he started helping me. What happened next? In a year, there is open position on, our, on one of the projects we have um, for React. And I uh, told the other manager, hey man, we have Sergey in automation. He's good in, at React. I know that because I worked with him on some application and they interviewed him and they hired him as React developer. What happened next? He works there for several, uh, like for a year or so, for several months. And then he finds the job as a senior React developer at Microsoft. Guess what happened next? As a contractor, contractor, what happens next? He gets a job as a senior React developer at HP and uh, goes on full-time. So that's your path. You don't have to stop on manual. I will suggest you to go to automation. You don't have to stop on automation. Learn uh, front-end development. You don't have to stop there as well. Go mobile development or go and learn full stack. And that's your path. Everything is doable with the right person around you with the right skills, with the right motivation, you will do everything. That's the story about Sergey, And I think he's a regular guy. And the only thing probably what differs him from others is just he has a motivation. He came to, I, I remember his first day when he came, we introduced him to the team and he tried to explain, um, we uh, told him, hey, tell us about yourself. And he tried to explain everything in like his worst English I ever heard, but he did that without scaring, right? If you want to be, if you want to be, yes. Uh, actually, uh, we use slogan. Uh, if you want, you can, because it really matters if you have what motivation, if you want, you can, and there is no question. Because you need to want first, and then you will do that. You will, you will can do that. If you just will want, that's, that's how it works. Okay, what next on agenda? <clears throat> so um, what I can tell you, so I, I don't have enough time to t tell you about everything because we almost at the end of our meeting, uh, our, uh, so I can tell you, I have two chats. I have a chat in uh, Telegram and I will be posting some articles there about you know, common mistakes in resume. Um, probably I will be recording some videos. I think I would like to record some video series uh, about how to pass interview, maybe some tips, some mistakes, maybe some examples with the students or something like that. Uh, so you can join uh, 
either Telegram chat or you can like our um, page on the Facebook. Let me send you URLs and you will be just getting the information there. Probably I will be doing such webinars as well more so you can join more and ask me other questions you are interested in, maybe get more motivation. Uh, but yeah, so I'm encouraging you to join our chats. So this is this is Telegram chat and this is Facebook page. I, uh, oh man. Okay, seems like I am, I have an additional Telegram chat. So there is a link to Telegram chat and a link to Facebook page. So I will be posting some articles there. I think just just follow them and I will be getting some additional information. Uh, my probably next few days, I will create uh, an article. I don't see it on general chat. It looks like oh, you wait, 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 posted wait. somewhere personal item. <clears throat> no, it says everyone in the waiting room. There is nobody in waiting room. So I don't know why. So uh, Telegram. So there will be some articles uh, soon, uh, everywhere. Actually, I will be posting them everywhere. So both in Telegram and on this Facebook page. Okay. Yeah, now, now you can see it. <clears throat> so that's first thing. Um, are there people actually, uh, so I know uh, we have people here who graduated from the courses. Are there people who didn't get any courses yet, who just interested in QA, or in development or just looking for some, you're just thinking what do you need to do, what language to choose or something like that. I'm trying to get into that business. <laughs> so what do you mean? So are you looking for courses or what do you do? Or you're just already uh, graduated from the courses and looking for a job. So what is, what is your status? Uh, my status, I mean, I'm like uh, right now desktop support engineer at uh -huh. Stanford and uh, I have some background in IT. I have inform I mean like bachelor's in informatics engineering and I'm trying to think what I need to change something because I mean uh, IT stuff like support IT stuff it's a little bit boring and I like troubleshooting right mm -hmm. so I like troubleshooting looking for the issues and try to find them and fix them. So I'm thinking like I need to change a little bit my career path and try to go probably to the QA and maybe some more programming uh, stuff. So this is probably why I'm looking around and what to learn. Maybe get some courses around and try to do that. Yeah, okay, good job. And I see that Noor uh, uh, responded that you are in GOPZ right now. Yeah, just let you know, they we had a call with them. And they tried to buy us, uh, not buy us. They they wanted us to join Jopizi to do stuff for them because they know we are good. <laughs> That's what's happening. Renatan uh, saying that they learning JavaScript and interested in QA. So you're learning JavaScript and QA. Uh, probably you're interested in automation QA, right, Renatan? So uh, not decided. Uh, because QA is, if you think about manual QA, it's good. I was manual QA. That's what my, that was my start as a manual QA. But um, then I went to automation. Right now I'm developing in React, actually. I am actually developing in React Native as well. And I'm developing a backend as well. And I'm I'm like full stack developer right now. I'm actually, my position right now currently as a QA manager but I am, I already developed my systems, uh, which I'm going to, uh, so I've developed a system for Mafia uh, because it's very uh, developing right now in the United States. It's very popular in Europe, but it's developing here. And we have uh, many clubs uh, already. It's like already, there is already championship in Las Vegas, like uh, for poker, right? It's coming to that point when it will be very popular. So we're developing the platform to for every club to hate their own statistics, their own players and everything else, something like that. So we cre I created that from scratch. So I'm developing and I taught other people to do that. 
Alona saying that I started to apply weeks ago, already had several in initial call from recruiters. Good, just continue. Uh, so what do you need to do, guys? What do you need to understand? If you're applying, uh, it's, a, it's a job. Every day you come to your systems, there are many websites, indeed. Uh, Indeed, uh, Dice, Monster.com, uh, LinkedIn. LinkedIn, you had to have profile. You have to have the great profile there and apply for jobs there. Uh, Angels.co, a lot of websites with jobs. But every day you have your filters. For example, you look for a job using QA or uh, test or tester or something like that, or automation or React or whatever. Every day you're using the same uh, filters, you go to the same websites and you see, hey, few more jobs, apply. Next day, few more jobs. And every website, every day you go through like five, six websites with jobs, apply everywhere. Um, you know, if you see on LinkedIn that some recruiters, they publish a job, just write a message to recruiter directly in LinkedIn. Don't be afraid. Just tell them, hey, I'm interested in this position. You post it. And they will reply and you will be one of the best candidates they have because of other just click apply button and you maybe you and maybe a few other people who wrote directly to that recruiter. So do that. Be just, you know, do not, do not be afraid of doing that. Uh, for those people who still deciding, I will give you the path, especially people looking for JavaScript, you're learning JavaScript, interested in QA. Uh, if you're learning JavaScript, Yes, uh, do QA, but right away, just do a test automation. If you're learning JavaScript, that's a good starting point for test automation. And you need to have a path. Again, remember, Sergey, you learn test automation, then you can go to web development, and then you can go to uh, mobile development or to full stack development. Just knowing this language, do not stop, just continue. Actually, test automation is easy. It's, it can be done in four months. You learn um, JavaScript in two months, basics. You can learn manual QA in two months, and then two more months, and you go to uh, test automation. And that's it, in four months, uh, you do test automation. Uh, hey, Divya, we will get back to you soon. Thank you for waiting. <clears throat> so, that's how you do. And actually, um, for example, uh, if you uh, go with Cypress on JavaScript, it will be uh, it will be a decision for a specific startup. Because if you make a decision uh, to use uh, Cypress, uh, you use that uh, because you have specific product you need to test, and Cypress is capable to do that. Uh, for example, Cypress is not capable of doing uh, mobile testing. But there is another framework, which is WebDriver IO. Uh, WebDriver IO is like more advanced framework. It's uh, probably dif more difficult to learn, um, not so easy, uh, but it is easy. If comparing to Cypress, maybe Cypress is easier, but WebDriver IO is the main framework we are, for example, teaching on. And it's capable to do everything. You can have different connections with different services. For example, you can just uh, test everything manually in the browser on your laptop. Or you can connect to browser stack cloud, or you connect to South Labs cloud, or you can use Apium uh, for uh, mobile testing. So there are many services you can connect to WebDriverio. You write the same tests, but connect to different services. So it's easy. You just learn that, and you're a super advanced guy looking for a job, and many companies want you. But again, guys, if you, even if you learn that, it doesn't mean you get a job because you need you still need motivation and you still probably need proper teachers to teach you how to go through the interview process, how to create a great uh, resume. Because the problem I'm seeing as a hiring manager, many people, they just come with the copies of each other resume. And I I'm clearly see, okay, those 20 people from this school. But uh, if there are some some few people out of these 20, they have some different nice resumes. They changed something. They did some additional work. I picked them for the interview. These who did additional job. And I declined 18 rest 
because they didn't do any job. They just copy it, they resume and they, they declined right away. So when you, for example, creating resumes on your courses, you just need to understand that are your colleagues, are your co-students will be applying to the same jobs and recruiters or hiring managers, they will see those matches. And that's what I see daily. But I exactly know that, okay, these people from courses, but they are nice, they did some additional job. Uh, they uh, additionally changed something in their resumes. They did that nice, right? They did some additional work. Okay, I will take them to the interview. If I like them, I will hire them. And that's it. I'm hiring people not only from my courses, but from other courses as well. But uh, you need to be the person doing something special and be motivated because the main, the last decision will be made only uh, depending on your motivation and your proactivity. If you will be just, you know, sad during the interview or too serious, your, your skills will not help you. Even your super skilled, that won't help you because people won't hire you. They will hire some nice person, uh, even maybe less skilled. <clears throat> uh, seems like TechStart has some free classes on uh, uh, April. Yes, we are doing free classes every two months. Uh, yes. I'm taking manual course. I know Java a little bit. And I know you're taking uh, uh, manual. Thanks so much for the advice. <clears throat> okay. Let me show you the path. Tech start. Let me show you the path. So what we are doing, what we are doing, and this is not the like, not the suggestion to go to our courses, but this is just the example of your path. So what you need to do, for example, you, you are deciding what to do. I learned manual testing, what do you need to do next? And that's what I don't like, actually. I don't like in many schools uh, who teach manual only, because that's, that's not right because you you teach manual only and uh, then people have to learn manual and then they need to learn uh separately automation from scratch that's bad uh, so what actually when i was creating course for pass in, in in the past so what happened so i said hey guys we need to do manual and coding basis at the same time parallelly you do manual qa but at the same time, for free, you get coding basics. Some people, they get only coding basics. For example, if there are people coming, hey, we would like to learn front-end development, front-end development, we will take coding basics because this is the prerequisite for front-end developer. So they take, they are not interested in QA, so they just take coding basics. So you can take that alone. But people coming to automation, we tell them, hey, don't stop on manual. You take manual course, even if you would like to learn manual, take manual course, take it. Parallelly, you are getting for free coding basics. Learn JavaScript for free. Just learning, uh, you do that uh, parallelly because uh, we do monthly subscription. We don't do like price for the course, we do monthly subscription. And we tell people, you learn for a month, uh, these courses are different days. So you learn one day manuals, uh, the other day you learn coding basics, then the next day manual, then again, next day coding basics. So today uh, you, you can take both. So this is how we develop courses. So you take both and by the end of the course, you are realized, okay, seems like I know JavaScript good, pretty good. So I can go to automation and you spend only two more months Two more months seems like you already know coding basics and you have to start from scratch and you do two more months and you are a test automation engineer. Because at this point, you don't learn JavaScript, you learn the tools and you write automation using your JavaScript knowledge. And this is how it happens. But what, what's more here, since we have Sergey's story, we tell people, hey, since you pay for the subscription, you can take front-end developer development at the, the same time parallelly for free. These guys also different days. So actually all courses are different days. So you can, at, on each level, you can take that parallelly and that's your path. So never, so if uh, null, right? Null, you're taking manual course. I would suggest you learn JavaScript 
learn JavaScript because you can easily then go to test automation. Then you know JavaScript, you can do front-end development. If you learned React, we learn people uh, React Native over here for mobile development. If you know React, React Native is easy peasy for you already. And then you do full stack development. So this path may take for uh, six months, two months, two months, two months. And for if people coming for us for mobile development, it's easy and logical for them. They learn coding basics, then they learn front end development, and then mobile development. It's easy because it is the same. So the only thing differs here, you just install different tools, uh, which called uh, React Native. You installed React Native, and but you do the same coding as here. So the people who know front end development, they can easily do mobile development. So what I would suggest you, at least for people who learn manual, uh, learn JavaScript parallelly, then by the end of the course, you need to understand if you uh, feel comfortable with your JavaScript knowledge, if you think you're pretty good, and actually all the students pretty good. So we never had a case when people say, hey, I won't be continuing doing test automation. So everybody goes here. We never stop. We don't have students stopping at here. Everybody, they learn JavaScript. They realize that they know it, and they go to test automation. If they go to test automation, we tell them, hey, you can do front-end development for free. Guys, just take it. It's, it's for you. Just we give that opportunity for you. Just do that. And again, why we are doing this? Because we would like to raise these people. We would like to have front-end developer, developers to help us with something. We put them on the project. They help us. We give them these projects if they would like to continue working on them after the courses. It's free. Just uh, This is how it works. So this is path for you. This is the path. And we actually, uh, this is the way from Mandalorian. This is the way. That's how we joke with each other. <clears throat> yes. And uh, so, Null, what is your price? What did you pay for uh, Job Easy? Let me stop sharing for now. There, I know that uh, they are not taking. Um, uh, right away, right? They, uh, Nur, no, sorry, Nur, what oh, What did you pay? There is some fee, right? Uh -huh, yes, yeah, $7.99 as a fee. And then how many, like 15% of your first year salary or how much, 15 or 10? <clears throat> yes, so I will give it, the, I will give you an example. I will give you just an example. Look at this. So that's, what the business differs from, uh, how business differs from uh, when people just have a um, mission. We have a mission. We don't care about business. We are not making money. By uh, paying this price, we are just covering uh, uh, the systems we are using. We are using Azure DevOps, the systems used by companies like Google, uh, Microsoft, and that's all uh, for project management. We pay a lot of money for that. And we're just covering this. And what happens, for example, our course, manual course, manual, takes two months. So you pay $9.98 for two months. $9.98 for two months, you pay. Now, and by that, you take manual QA and coding basics at the same time. So you learn manual for two months and coding basics at, at the same time. And you pay only... Uh, 998, 998 for that, right? This is the difference. You already paid uh, as, uh, as close to that. And plus you will pay 15% of your salary if you find a job, right? <clears throat> That's the difference. And plus, but you, if you do test automation, that is absolutely, there is a half path test, right? And you do test automation only, uh, for two more months, and that's it. You're a test automation engineer after four months. This is how it works. This is actually this approach I created for uh, PASF. We were doing this and this, but that was as uh, one course. There was no like levels. And actually PASF right now, what they are doing, they take this level one and level two, a test automation, and this four month course cost $5,000 there. Right. In our case, it's one hundred one thousand nine ninety six. 
right? So this is the difference. And what is the difference uh, between us and them? Because they are they are business and they have to pay for all those uh, marketing teams. Uh, we don't have anybody, so that's it. So again, <clears throat> if anybody interested in doing something better, something, probably some startups, if you're thinking about some start, startup, some career, maybe being part of something bigger, something important, you know what to do, right? Okay, two years? Two years. Oh, wow. It's a lot right now. I don't know that they are charging for two years right now. I believe it was one year. Okay, interesting. If there was a bootcamp that thought graphics programming. Yes, I think I think they are. Why not? So we are, uh, we are actually, uh, uh, we are open for anything. Uh, some people telling us right now, hey, uh, there is a data analyst. Uh, data analyst uh, becoming popular right now. And then we, we are saying, hey, okay, if it's becoming popular, we will just learn that. Uh, we will just see if it works, if people are interested, if we need that in our mission, if that, it, if that complies with our mission. If we see that some people with business, or not with business, with uh, data analysts uh, needed for our future, we'll probably open the course to that as well. So we are open for anything. So maybe tomorrow we will have graphics programming course. I don't know. Right now we are focused on this one because again, we are just using simple language, one single language, which is JavaScript. And we are able to do everything with that. We are, we are using React JS. We are using React Native for mobile development, uh, Backend, uh, Express JS, um, Automation, WebDriver, Yo, Cypress. The most popular tools we are using is uh, on uh, one language. So that's how it works. Um, okay, so I have one bonus for you, just in case. Uh, you don't have to do anything, but just in case if you want. So I've talked to Sergey uh, today and I said, so uh, as you can see, I was not publishing a link to this webinar uh, right away. Just, I, I told people, hey, uh, tell, uh, send me, um, go to the reg registration form and put your data there. And what I did that, uh, almost hundred people, uh, responded to that, uh, responded to that, uh, um, registration form. S sorry guys. I'm just, I'm just tired. <clears throat> and only 20 people, uh, stayed till this moment. So I said, People need, to, because what was happening before you was asking for uh, free courses. We were doing free courses many times. What, what happens? 200 people says, uh, I'm, I'm going. Uh, like 400 people says, we are interested. But you know how many comes? Like 30, sometimes 50 people, right? Out of those 500 people or 600 people. So Really, uh, and many of those people, they are not motivated at all. They just came because it's free. I will just sit, listen, and do nothing. And I'm telling people, hey, ask me a question. There is a silence. Right now, I like, I'm enjoying working with you because you're asking questions, you're replying, you're turning your microphone, you're drinking beer, right? You're nice people to work with. And that's what I like. And that's why I used registration form. You applied. And I know that you are interested. You spend some energy. You spend some time to go to this uh, position, to this place, this webinar, to talk to me. So that means this is something important for you. So I've talked to Sergey, and we have some bonus for you, just in case. I, I'm not sure if any of you are interested in that. But if some of you are, so this is what you get. So we created a bonus for you. So if some of you looking for a courses and if you would like to try, so <clears throat> this is one bonus I have for those people who are here. It's $99 for first month, first month. So if somebody wants to try, for example, it's nothing, it's $99. It, we will spend more on you. <clears throat> oh man, I'm just sending to somebody else. Let me go. It's $99 for first month. 
the first month. Yeah. So this is the offer uh, for people who are on this webinar and it will be only available for one hour after the webinar. One hour after the webinar. If somebody uh, applies through this link, then you will get the first month for $99. And what you can do, you just can try. If you like us, if you like me as a teacher, if you like other people as a teacher, if you will enjoy, you will get the best courses because I know uh, other people want me, Job Easy calling me, uh, trying to, uh, asking me to join them. Uh, I created a course for PASF. I know that our courses are better. So I know what you're getting. So if you are interested, this is the bonus for you. But again, it will be available only one hour after uh, this webinar. If you're still thinking, and just because you came here, just because you came here, because you attended, this is the second offer I have for you. And I've discussed that with Sergey. So he, he said, okay, I don't care. If people really want to come, let them try. So <clears throat> this is another bonus. It's, uh, it has no end date. Just because you came here, you get this bonus uh, to try. So this is what I'm uh, giving to you just because you came here. Um, what, does, what does that mean for you? Uh, it just for you to try. It just for you to try, you just try. Uh, if you like us, if you see that we are great, great courses, you will continue. If you don't like us, you will just, that's nothing. That's uh, two times, go two times to the restaurant with the family, right? And that's it. So this is a great offer. Uh, we actually spending more, if, for example, in the first offer, $99, we spend more on a student per month. Uh, let me tell you, for example, only for test uh, um, test cases tool we, we use in Azure DevOps, we pay five, uh, $50 per month per student. For example, we have 100 students, we pay $5,000 just only for test cases. I'm not telling about servers about other features, about Azure DevOps in general, about repos for automation, repos for uh, web development, for other tools, uh, for uh, testing machines, for anything else. So you need to understand that, do we have a support from teacher when, yes, of course, guys. So I, I didn't want to tell about this because I have still a few, a few questions I want to discuss with you, like, about market, US market right now. But yes, I will tell you about the process. So we are family. We don't have enough, uh, a lot of students. We, uh, we limit groups. If we have more than 30 applicants, we just say 30 maximum as in the school. In the school, there is a rule, 30 uh, people per teacher maximum. We do the same, no more. Because we want, uh, again, uh, we don't have business. We like, we don't do business. Our goal is to teach students and grow uh, great people. Uh, grow community. So uh, our goal is to have professionals we can use in the future, right? So our goal is to raise professionals from you. And once you become professionals, then we just go and, uh, for example, tell you, hey, you're a great guy, you're an automation guy, or you are a React development guy, you work at Apple right now. Uh, let's do something together, maybe some startup, we have some idea, right? So our goal is to raise communities, to surround ourselves with great people. That's, uh, that's the main answer. So if you, have, if you have enough support, yes, you have 24 seven support because we are interested. And um, uh, that's why we brought Julia. What I was doing, so why I left the, <coughs> sorry, why I left PASS, because what happened when we started to get 100 students per course, and that's 100 students per teacher, right? I had a course, manual course, and automation course, it's 100 people per me. And I didn't give them enough attention, but they wanted. And what happened, I started to spend four hours for a lesson. Uh, however, it was planned two hours per lesson. Right. So what happened, uh, they just uh, didn't was, uh, yeah, I was not giving enough attention to them, but I was spending four hours. My family was arguing, hey, man, you're like sitting till 12 o'clock uh, a.m. Come on, we need you. We are here in this in your life. Right. So my family was uh, a little bit uh, disappointed with this and I was disappointed because I was not giving enough attention to them and I left because that was a business. And Julia is the same. She was telling me, I'm going to quit. And I told her, hey, join us. And because she told me the same, 
I cannot leave the students. I cannot um, not answer the questions. I have to stay with them. I have, I spend a lot of my own time, personal time, and nobody pays me for that. Uh, they paid me only for uh, lessons. I spent two hours for lesson. That's it. That's your payment. But n uh, nobody paid her, for example, for checking homeworks, for working with resumes, for working with uh, um, uh, interviews and so on. So she told me that I, I don't like that because I would like to stay with people and I spend time, but I'm not giving great response, right? I'm not giving great response. They are not uh, treating me as a great teacher. So we told her, hey, join us. We have the same mission. We have the same vision. And what we told her, what we actually, why people with the joining us? We are just small, few, few people, of course, right? We have lowest prices. We don't have enough, a lot of students. We compete with big companies, with the big uh, marketing uh, teams. But why people joining us? Because two things, we have a mission, we have a vision, we like our students and we give them percent. We tell him, hey, we're going to have eight teachers, for example, right? So you give, uh, you get 10% of everything. So if we have uh, students, you get more pay, we have less students, you have less pay. So more you work with students, more they like you, more they uh, would like to continue with you, more they will pay, and then you will get more money. So everybody's interested. And they are interested in uh, the fact that they right now have a vision. And she would like to implement that, uh, that idea when she is talking to startups, bringing products uh, to test, and we will be working with startups with our students, right? He, she has that vision and she would like to do that. And that's why, <clears throat> no, you, yes, uh, $99 per course for first month. No, you can take two courses. So uh, again, guys, we just have a subscription. So you subscribe for a month and you can take any courses you are, uh, you have prerequisites for. For example, um, manual QA has no prerequisites and uh, uh, JavaScript has no prerequisites. So you, you can take that parallelly. Yes, you, you take that parallelly and you learn that. Uh, for example, you cannot take front-end development right away because you need to learn JavaScript basics first because front-end uh, React, uh, you learned React itself, React itself, uh, the framework itself but that requires um, JavaScript knowledge. So that's how it works. So we do first level and people who did everything and we have simple rules. You attend classes uh, and may I start from level two? No, you, know, you may not. Actually, there are exclusions. Uh, we have some specific, for example, um, requirement for front end. Uh, we have about 500, points on uh, code wars and specific tasks and some jobs to do, some pull requests to do and so on. If you comply with that, if you we, we can talk to you and we see that you up to that level to take the level two course, yes, you can do. But most of the people, no, they have to go to the first course. <clears throat> uh, every lesson is recorded, but I encourage everybody, guys, I encourage everybody attend lessons attend because watching recordings it's it's not working there is less than one percent people who can do that who can watch recordings and be successful most of the people they have to spend time with teacher ask questions and be in this live mode right this is how it works attending classes and doing homework two components of success on the course that's we guarantee if you do these two things you get a successful job if you just attend classes and do your homework because uh, they are designed in the way uh, by doing a homework we know okay you know this uh, topic if you completed your homework you know this topic if you completed all the homeworks we know that you have enough knowledge to get any job and as i mentioned we have students who get qa lead and uh, senior uh, testers job uh, easily so that's the component of success. You just need to do that. Um, I have a few more 
topics if you want guys uh, we probably won't be able to do uh to showing you what what create Aster does or what is coding I, I i was planning to show you um some examples of automated tests to show you that it is super easy because we're just copying pasting reusing code right we are not typing everything from scratch we are just reusing code as much as possible so there are a few more questions something like is it realistic to get into it now easily since the problem is we are not we are even hiring people who didn't fully comply for this position because uh, there are remember there are less candidates on the market than jobs there are more jobs than candidates that's what we have work visas and we brought bring people from other countries because we don't have enough people to to fill those roles we have more roles than uh, than applicants for them what are the starting salaries for manual, um, I would, I would, I will tell about the market, U.S. market in general. It may be higher, for example, in Silicon Valley, but since right now everything is remotely, is about thirty dollars per hour for manual tester. For automation, at least forty hours per uh, forty dollars per hour. It's the minimum, minimum. Usually, uh, I would be probably focusing manual tester for like 80, 80K, so it's like 40 per hour, and 120K for automation. It's like 60 per hour. It's like median. Some people get more. For example, I have students who right now get 160K per year, so easily, and just in a year. <clears throat> Can I personally become a tester programmer easily? We already discussed that. Uh, why don't recruiters call me? Um, there are common mistakes in resume and that's why i will start uh, writing articles so please uh, if you join our groups in telegram or our um, page in facebook just watch our page from time to time i will be posting articles and videos and just take your resume and just compare with that article it will tell you hey your name here are some suggestions for the name for your uh, objective for technical skills, for summary of qualifications, for your experience, how it works together, for your education, for something else, right? And just compare your resume with that, and then we'll go through your resume, and then we will just fix it. Maybe your recruiters don't call in you because your resume is a copy of somebody else's resume. For example, you graduated from the course, 20 people resumes are the same. You have to be unique. Your resume have, uh, has to be unique. And that's maybe what's happening, why record doesn't call you. Maybe it is just copy. Just make it unique. Use other words, maybe use the same things. But in other words, maybe use different formatting and just make it different. So other people, they still get the client, but your resume get, uh, gets visibility and you get invited to some interviews. <clears throat> How to get through the interview? I already told you. Guys, technical side is good, but you need just to be uh, complying to that job description and have the necessary skills. But the final decision will be made based on your positiveness, your productivity, your motivation, your fire and eyes. If they see that you're super motivated, you're a nice person to work with, they will hire you, not anybody else. So do not be afraid of going to the interviews. Remember about my story. Remember I, about me right now. I'm not giving up. I'm doing just my best. I have my goal. And my goal is to do something good, to create maybe some application or some product that will change somebody's life. And I would like to surround myself with the people like me. That's why I'm doing courses, because I would like to find those people. I would like to many students go through me and to find people like me with the same vision with uh, motivation, with proactiveness. And I would like to surround myself with those people. I already found few and I'm doing courses right now with them. So the, the uh, teachers working uh, with me right now, Sergey with my co-founder, he's the guy and they are the guys I would like to work with. And we need more people like that to work with startups, to create something better, to create some great products in the future. So if you have the same vision, welcome. I would love and I will invest all my time 
to make you successful because that's that's my vision remember if you even just right some of you you already graduated from the courses you're just looking for a job just remember about my case i'm i'm competing with big companies with big courses and i'm still doing that because because i have a vision i have no other choice i'm just doing that because i need to find those people and there is no way other way for me even i'm i spent almost three hours with you and that's okay because i know that i'm investing this time into my future because if i'm not doing this i won't find needed people and that means i will never create the product i want to create so i'm doing this because i would like to i have my goal and i have my motivation and i was really stressed a few days ago really stressed and my wife helped me and i just sat and thought about why i'm doing this and i realized yes this is the only way and that's why i'm smiling that's why i'm still moving forward because i will move till then because this is my goal and this is my motivation you need to think about the same if you go to interviews there is nothing to be afraid of recruiters easy other people daily dealing with more scarier things or something more difficult than you do so then just relax go to that interview and be yourself be natural be smiling you know just be yourself and you will get that job i promise you you will get that job just be yourself because people buy emotionally and you will get the job okay <clears throat> uh is it possible to work remotely right now everything is remotely some companies try to get back to the office but most of the companies especially big tech giants they said no remote only for at least the next year and then probably we will just continue working remotely at least for 70 percent of the people maybe some people will get back to the office but most of them will stay remotely and that's great because you are not limited by your local city or your local a job market right now you apply to any position across the united states any everywhere you see open position apply there if you're building filters on those websites job searching websites do not put bay area san francisco sacramento or los angeles or dallas texas uh, um, austin nothing just put us and look for any position open in the us do not limit yourself you can work remotely right now is manual testing done no no way actually most of the companies they have more manual testers than automation testers and the reason is very simple if you think that you opened your um, own project and you have this decision <clears throat> so you need to get something tested in order to test that button is green manual tester will spend a few seconds button is green okay passed right in order to automation tester to write that code um uh, he that tester will spend several hours and plus uh, configuration framework plus initial installation plus blah 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 so it's uh way more expensive to pay automation tester because uh, automation tester is expensive more expensive than manual um than uh, than a manual tester right so that's why it makes sense to do um a lot of things manually for example, if we develop new features, we test them fully manually because it's cheaper because manual testers, they are not uh, so expensive as automation testers. They do not, do not require um, you know, coding language knowledge, right? And same with developers. You, it's better to hire a developer and spend 100% of his time on developing code, not testing and not doing something else because it's just wasting money. So you hire testers to do their job, to test. And you hire automation tester to do something we can do only with automation. For example, it makes sense to do regression testing with automation or smoke testing with automation or load testing with automation. So you hire people for specific things. Some companies trying to do automation only, but it doesn't mean that it's correct because as logically you need to think about it, you open your own project. And you, do, you need to do the same amount of work. You need to test that this application works correctly. You hire a lot of automation testers, you pay them a higher salary, and they spend way more time 
to cover one page by automation, the manual tester would do that in 15 minutes. And for 15 minutes, you will pay manual tester like $10 for 15 minutes of work. And you will pay for a day of work for an automation tester, um, how much? Like 50 by eight, like 400, 400 and ten dollars. Here is the difference for testing the same automatically and manually. So there is something to test manually. There is something to test automatically. What what is makes sense? Because it it makes sense to build constantly regression suite, and um, at some period of time run regression suite and raise it. Some repetitive actions to do with automation or some quick actions to do with automation or simulate a lot of users automation, right? So there are specific things to do with automation, but most of the uh, functional testing is done manually because it's cheaper, logical and faster, right? So that's, that's why manual is still uh, very actual. And again, uh, the main reason why we are doing still manually because the main end user is a human. And you as a human, you just try to see if that works correctly for you as a human. Okay, and there was one more question I wanted to discuss. There are a few jobs in my city, what to do? Right now, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because uh, pre previously, yes, uh, people were looking for a local market and they were looking for a job locally. Right now, since you can apply everywhere, so it doesn't matter really how many jobs in your local market. Just apply everywhere. Okay, questions from the chat. <clears throat> is it possible to finish in one month instead of two months? No, it is not possible because there is length of the course, right? And uh, it's two months and it has everything planned accordingly. The lessons, right? And the full amount of knowledge you get is broken down into two months uh, lessons you won't be able to get anything in one month. You just, just in the middle, stop in the middle, right? So of course not. And if you try to do the same amount of uh, knowledge in one month, you won't be successful uh, as well because it will be too much for you, right? It's like, uh, it's already too much. So uh, I, I can tell you that that too much course, uh, two month course, some people, they are still not doing homeworks. There are still people that we are we have to push them and say, hey, do your homework. And some people not coming to the lessons. So even with that amount of knowledge, we try to stretch it. But even with that, people are not doing homework. So no, uh, forget about that. Never think about that. If there is a course and people thought about it, right? Overthought about that course, created specific. Uh, and again, we work in the project. So we have project job, project work. And you have to finish that work. You cannot just stop in the middle, right? We have several sprints as in, as in the project because we use real products to test, right? So uh, you cannot do that. You cannot just stop in the middle. There is a project, there is a program for this course and you have to finish to be successful. Two months, no exclusions. Thank you. Thank you guys. You are, you are good. I really, I really, I enjoyed, I enjoyed this webinar because I didn't expect so much attention, so much interaction with you, many questions. You know, uh, I was doing many free courses and I tell you a lot of people join, but 90% of them, they just, they just do nothing. They just came to listen because it's free, right? But you spend some energy, you register, then you came to the, this webinar amazing i love i love talking to you because you're asking me question i um, i i love uh, uh i i love uh, giving you answers okay thank you zadira your webinars are always informative thank you so much thank you thank you for coming i appreciate that so i did get you correctly i have to physically be able to attend your classes there is no way uh, it will work for me just watching videos i'm in denver uh, is there any other courses in my area? Would you? Uh, I don't know um, courses in your area, unfortunately, but um, not physically. Like we do online courses, online courses. So you need to join Zoom meeting as we do right now. We do everything screen sharing. You share your screen, do something. Uh, actually, I can request uh, uh, controlling your screen and you tap something, show you something. You do the same for me. So you didn't have to 
you don't have to be uh, physically here in this room, right? You have to be online. Okay. I have no real experience how to write a resume experience. It's very hard to lie about the experience in K. <clears throat> no, it's not hard. You don't have to lie. So what we do, uh, the approach we are using for writing resume, so you take your previous job and on the previous job, especially if you work with computers or some technical stuff, you always can rewrite your experience in uh, uh, QA manners. For example, what we do, people, uh, some people, some one guy was installing satellite dishes, right? And he was installing them, testing, then he had computer with, uh, with him and doing some stuff there. And we said, hey, man, you were a tester. You were testing those uh, satellite dishes. So let's, okay, what you were doing? Did you have any documentation? Any requirements, what, how to do? Yes, I had. We had some, when, for example, we had a new version of this uh, dish, we had to read that documentation. Oh, so you were doing the same as tests are doing. You were reading documentation and trying to understand. Okay, good. We put this in your resume. Then were you creating any checklist? What to check? Uh, yes, I was. Okay, you were do, doing test planning. Great. So we take real job and just rewrite it in the way uh, that person was doing some testing and that's work. There are people who will confirm that he will working, uh, he was working there, he was testing dishes and blah, blah, blah. You have references, you have everything. And other people, for example, uh, working with some, uh, they were booking uh, some flights for their clients and working in some, I don't know, agency uh, for booking flights or booking some uh, trips or something like that. And they were working with computers. They had some software installed. And especially if they installed new version, they had some people to teach them how to use or some documentation. So anyways, if you're working with computers, uh, if you're working with technical stuff, you can easily rewrite a resume. Just think about, you need to think of, especially you need to, of course, graduate from the courses, ideally. Because if you graduate from the courses, you exactly know what tester does. Then you say, okay, did I do something similar in the past? Yes, I was working with documentation. I was test planning. I was reporting issues to maybe some IT team, let's say developers, right? I was doing something else, something else. And I was doing the same as tester uh, do. So that's it. This is how it works. <clears throat> do we have homework? It will be checked by teacher. Of course, you have a homework. It's checked by teacher. And based on, so based on that homework, we see if you're successful or not. And we have, for example, in JavaScript, we have specific amount of work you have to do. And if you did this amount of work, then you can go to uh, next level. If you, if not, you still have, we usually do breaks between the courses, between the levels. So you have that time to maybe watch videos again, to complete your whole homework. Additionally, maybe you missed something to com com complete that homework to be able to join the next course. For manual, it's different. Uh, for manual course, it's we have a project because um, uh, JavaScript basics, there is no real product, right? There is just basics of coding language. Then on front end, you get a real product or on automation, you get a real product. Uh, manual PA is different. We have a real, real product there right away. And we just put people on the project and they start working with documentation. They start planning, testing, and right away. And they have homework, which is you need to plan testing for this uh, user story. And of course, we explain how to do that. They know how to do that, but this is their homework. And we check that homework. Then we check this homework. We do overview. We say, hey, this is the mistake. You need to do that differently. Yes, this is how it works. And it works the same on the work. There are people, there is a lead, there is a manager who overview your job and they tell you, hey, you did something wrong and you need to do that better. <clears throat> is it possible to uh, finish manual course in one month? No, I just explained, no, it, that is not possible. Especially manual course, manual course, it's project-based course. You're real on the real project. There is job duties. There are assignments. There is a program stretched to two months and you start with documentation, then you go to planning, then you go to reporting, then you go to bug uh, verification, then you go to regression testing and blah, blah, blah. And that takes time. 
And you cannot take just one piece and say, hey, I'm manual tester. No, you can. You have to go through the, the process. And then we do several sprints. And this is how you learn on the real project. And then you know exactly what to do. So the, the main approach we're using is project-based uh, uh, because um, uh, the project based because you you know exactly how project works uh, <clears throat> many people they uh, many schools they teach people on slides they show this slides um, this is how it works what we do we just put people on the project hey guys this is the project just imagine you just joined company yesterday and you had preference your brother brought you here right and they refer to you and without knowledge you just on this project this is business analyst and what you start working from is documentation. You work with business analyst. This is business analyst. This is documentation. This is what you need to do. You need to just read it, understand it, and look for any questions you have for this documentation, any ambiguities, any um, incompleteness or contradictions, anything like that. And that's how people learn on the project. So we do several sprints, several real project sprints. And by the end of the course, when we do mock interviews, we ask people, tell me about your project. And they easily describe all the phases of software development life cycle, not because they remember that from slides, from presentation, because they really did that. That's how it worked. So that's why learning in one month is not possible. Okay? Because you have to do everything to do uh, to be successful. Noor, uh, you said that's why I started from manually. I tell you, you have to move forward. Manual is not is not something, I don't know, you are, uh, you need to uh, stop on. Manual is good to start with, but I would suggest you learn automation because it's easy. I, I'm, I was giving you a lot of examples of other people. Automation is easy. Most of my success stories are people who just learned automation in four months. And automation means they learned manual and uh, test uh, coding in parallel. They didn't do did, uh, automation. And they then they found their job in automation right away. Some people found the job in manual because what we tell people, uh, we start looking for a job during manual course. Uh, so to train, we tell people how to do that. And so they start looking for a job um, uh, during manual course. And if they find job, we tell them, yes, take that job. Take that job, manual job, and continue learning on this course you took, right? Uh, continue learning. And you learn two more months and then start looking for automation job. And then you will work maybe two more months and you will leave in four months and because you, you will find automation job. So that's... That's the path. That's the exact path we define for people and we tell them what to do. So this is how it works. And that's how people become successful. Okay. Okay. Thank you for advices and webinar. Guys, thank you. Uh, you. You cannot even imagine how I'm glad that you were asking a lot of questions because I like this. I like when people ask questions, I like to help you. Because I have this pain as interviewer, right? And when I'm looking for people, I have pain and I would like to feel this pain, to find a painkiller. And you need, when you are interviewing, right? You, you would like to find a person who will feel, the, feel this position, who will kill your pain. Same here. My pain doing webinars that people are not active, but you are super active. So I really like that. And thank you for that, that you are asking questions, you are interacting with me. Uh, awesome. I'm really glad that I spent this time with you. So thank you all. Um, those links for you, uh, join the groups. Uh, please do not share those links, those bonus links. They are for you because you joined this meeting. You spent time with me, so you deserve them. If you would like to join the course, you deserve them, uh, not everybody. Remember that the first one will be disabled in one hour. Second one is just for you because you joined this webinar. So hope I helped you. Hope I motivate you because this is the main important thing, uh, the motivation. And just you need to remember about your goal, about your mission, about what you need to do in this life. And that needs to move you forward.
So do not be afraid of any interviews. That's nothing. Just go and take your job from position of strength. Hey, hey I'm your best candidate. Uh, actually, we do a few things, interesting things. We suggest our clients some tricks, how to be remembered, how to be the best candidate, how to do some jokes, some interesting jokes, smart jokes, so people remember you as their best candidate. But probably I will describe some of that in um, more articles uh, I will be posting soon, or maybe some videos. Um, so please keep in touch. Okay, guys, you are the best. Uh, so thank you for participating. Any questions from you? Good night, everyone. Yes, definitely motivated. Happy Friday. Yeah, happy Friday, guys. Yeah. Okay. When we start? When we start? We start on March 15. We start on March 15 in uh, almost a week. Like we're gonna, we're gonna have next Monday after Monday, March 15th, we start the next course. Okay, so uh, hope to see you in the next webinar. I will be continuing doing webinars. Maybe we'll be changing agenda to cover more uh, um, uh, topics. Uh, if you have any suggestions for uh, agenda for the next webinar or agenda for many some articles you would like to learn maybe some you have problems with resume you have problems with interview just give me some ideas so I will be please more webinars yeah I can do that so I can definitely do that uh, again what I'm looking for is to see feedback if I have a feedback I see your interest I will be doing that if I will go to webinar and there will be 100 people just silently sitting sitting I won't be continuing doing that, right? So I, I really enjoyed this one because it was really good. So more webinars, okay. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, uh, whatever. Just send me a message. Uh, find me on uh, those pages you joined, those chats in tech, um, in uh, Telegram. So just let me know. Okay, guys. Uh, three hours. Wow. It was like 10 minutes for me. So thank you for participating. Uh, love you and have a great Friday. Have a great weekend and see you next time. Bye-bye.